Oh, yeah, we should be. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, uh, follow us on Twitter at Run Button, at Kylie Theodora, at Keith J. Carberry. Please support us on Patreon so that we can live and eat food. Patreon.com slash Run Button, contentburger.biz. Please, if if for some reason you're listening to this on your podcast feed, but you haven't skipped on over to youtube.com slash run button recently to watch some of our videos, please do that. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Run Button Podcast. I'm your host by snatching it first, Kylie Theodora. I have to think about my name sometimes now. With me, as always, is my cousin. Who's that? Hi, it's Keith. Keith Carberry. Yeah. Um, what's funny is the I changed my first name, but <laughs> the thing that catches me now is the last name that I also yeah, changed. Right. Yeah. Well, because you're... Because, I mean you it's much different now than it was i guess yeah i guess your first name is uh, very similar but your last name is very different I, mm, gosh i i wish everyone in my life agreed with that i cannot mm. all right moving it's on a, what do you okay that's fine no it's it's probably not what you think but it is wild and crazy and i will definitely tell you off air okay well, um, we just started you can just tell me now and we can restart no we're already uh the thing it's uh anyways if you if you're the run button fan that only listens to the run button podcast uh i started going by kylie theodora with theodora was my new middle name and i figured eh, go by that one i like it better than churchill and also i feel the need to have some some very tiny measure of anonymity between my online personality and my real life personality for things like um so I won't have to lock my Twitter account every time I like apply for a job or or an apartment. Yeah. Well, you know, cuz I don't want my land my prospective landlords to find all my tweets about how landlords deserve the blade. I'll say this though. There's there's something to sometimes you just need a pl- you need to you need a job or a place really fast and you can't have to think about it, but if someone is going to not hire you or potentially so if someone's True. going to fire yeah, you over your yeah. t- twitter account you'd rather them just not hire you i know it's true but i mean in the case of a landlord that's the only interest like they're not going to be looking at my twitter later like i'm not going to be i'm not right. going to be late every right. day for a year and they're going to be like kylie why are you so fucking late all the time i want to go snoop on your facebook you uh, no, you're <sighs> I, 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 you, what you have said makes sense but you're wrong landlords are snoopers that is true not all yeah, of them, right. but they, they'll yeah. just look for no reason like you might not be you're not late to work they don't so they don't have that as the excuse but like what if you're yeah. late on rent are you uploading pictures of you buying stuff but and but uh, you're also late yeah. on rent yeah luckily my uh my new landlord uh seems fine and also is old and doesn't know the internet yeah my my, my current landlord's fine too first first fine landlord ever yeah i was i was pretty i you might have been in the similar situation because like i was pretty skeptical of this one because my previous situation was i was just literally living in the landlord's house and this one yeah. instead is I am living in a duplex where the landlord lives in the other half of the duplex. Yeah. Um, I've had one of like, those before. Yeah. But so far it's been totally fine. Like when I moved in, I kind of asked my uh, roommates like, how's the landlord? And I think one of them was like, well, I've lived here for a year and I think I've seen her once. And I was like, yeah, it's perfect. That's exactly yeah. what I'm looking for. That's the, that is my like current landlord problem is that I see my landlord all the time yeah uh and like the the silver lining is that he's a nice guy he's interesting to talk to he's a weird artist that lives on a boat 
Um, <laughs> yes. uh, he has a lot to say about a lot of things that are interesting. The the downside is that he's my landlord, and he could just yeah. like have negative opinions about random stuff. Like if he looks in my window and it's dirty, and then all of a sudden he's like, yeah. "This has never happened." But like, this is just what you think about when you deal with landlords. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. like if they look into my window because they're fixing something on the wall, and they see that a room is dirty, and then they're like shitty about it. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh. because he's fixing things around the house, he's like around all the time. Uh, he painted the whole house. Oh, okay. He replaced a ton of the siding on the house, which will be great. It's well, going to save me like six hundred dollars this winter on energy bills. Oh probably. wow! But but uh, so I, I guess honestly, pretty pretty good trade. Um, but the, yeah, but this is new this year, right? Uh, yeah, he I was living in New York, and he's actually going to be gone all winter again. He's like take he's taking his good. boat to some warm <laughs> place. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whatever. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I should I should say just so that we're getting an accurate picture of my of my landlord. This is a sailboat. This is not like a yacht. Oh, okay. He lives oh, he oh, lives yeah, on I, like a small like three person sailboat. Well, yeah. Knowing that the apartment you're currently living in was originally a place he planned to live in, I yeah. already knew it wasn't a yacht. But right. a sailboat well, is even funnier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't sure what kind of boat. Like, do you remember the boat from Arrested Development that Job lives on? No. Um, well, uh, well I mean, vaguely, that was probably what I was picturing. Yeah, actually. that's what I was picturing. It was like a medium. It's like a, a medium sized boat. It's got like yeah. a room yeah. in it, like an okay sized room, yeah. and the rest of it is just boat shit. But this is like a sailboat, which I don't know if you've ever been inside a sailboat, but it is not like it is not the tops i don't know yeah, no i would imagine not i uh, imagine most of the space is taken up with shit you need to sail the boat with yeah yeah totally <laughs> um yeah he's a he's a weird guy um uh what was my last what was my last point um you were saying like weird things you get in your head about like what your landlord's gonna judge you for yeah well i can i have I have more landlord stuff than sure. I have. Yeah. Um, so my landlord's thing was like... By the, the way, we're going to talk about video game stuff. Oh, just, yeah. Let's just... Sorry. For, I, just wanna, I just want everyone to know that like this is going somewhere. We are going to... But just, just be patient. See, I don't... Mm, this is... I'm not sure... I don't think the audience that we often have in our heads is the audience that actually listens to this podcast. I feel like you said, we're going to talk about video games eventually, and like half the people listening went, no, oh, all right, fine. I, I disagree. I think that I think I think that we okay. have the best well, video game podcast in the biz, and I think that people are constantly ow, wow, best champing at the bit to get to our, our oh, video game discussion. Yeah, and and that's how good we are that our fans champ at the bit because every other game podcast, their fans are chomping at the bit, and that's all wrong. That's way that's wrong. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay, landlord stuff. <laughs> I just remember. I think I've said this before. It's like real, really sh like shitty, like <laughs> like semi passive aggressive thing I said to a friend once who was like, "I'm really chomping at the bit to tell you about this," and I was like, "And I'm champing at the bit to hear about it." Uh, but anyways, my, my landlord, I think Still your like, friend, no, my landlord's not my friend. <laughs> oh, no, that, that, that friend, my friend. Said that too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't even think they got it. Okay. Uh, but, um, there basically the, the main thing was like, and I'm going to speak a little bit quietly now cause I'm not sure where the walls line up. Uh, but her thing was like no smoking in the house. And like, so first when I moved in, it was like, you know, that like over the smoking first like, or like smoking, smoking, they just said smoking. Right. And so my, cigarettes. my feeling is that's what I would assume. I mean, I think they probably mean it as a catch all, but I know that marijuana smoke when you're not smoking it as a joint, when there's no paper involved does not linger and is not nearly as strong as yeah. cigarette smoke. You're like, totally right. Yeah. Like I remember one time I was in high school and like my mom was away for the weekend and for some reason I smoked one light cigarette in my bedroom out the window and then proceeded to just like chain smoke weed the entire weekend. And then like when she came home, my room still smelled like the cigarette three days later and she like and she, like basically she figured out that I had been smoking weed only because she assumed the smell of the cigarette was weed. 
uh but anyways so like when i moved in here it's like the first month and a half it was like this slow progression of like first i'm only smoking outside on the porch and then like okay i'm smoking inside out the window and then i'm like smoking inside when all the windows are open and then like but then um i had dental work done uh so you're not supposed to suck on anything you're not supposed to create suction in your mouth because that can dislodge the you know the clots that are you know helping your mouth heal or whatever Mm -hmm. uh or or just the actual tooth shit that they put in your face that needs to stay in there um and so what i used i what i made was a gravity bong oh nice Uh, very smart which um, i was gonna ask like (coughs) if you get a bong with a wide enough i don't know aperture mouth mm -hmm. hole it you kind of aren't really in uh like sucking you're kind of just inhaling normally mm. already or you just yeah, don't want to risk it uh kind of yeah don't want to risk it i did also find a way that like you know i can i depending i think that my most recent one is the hardest but when it was just my bottom teeth i could actually like create a seal that did not involve my lower jaw and so Mm -hmm. it still worked or whatever but anyways if you don't know a gravity bong it's actually a fluid displacement bong but i think like 17 year old stoners aren't that smart uh so it's smart enough to make one yeah i guess so uh who cares about the 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 name if you've got the theory down yeah (laughs) it's a pot it's like a big pot of water and then you like cut the bottom off a two liter bottle and you put like tin foil on the top to make a little bowl and you put weed in there and you light it and then as you do that you lift it out of the water so all the water comes out the bottom new yep. air gets sucked in through the top it fills the bottle with smoke and then you have a bottle full of weed smoke uh but the problem is that it creates a lot of excess smoke that just goes yeah. everywhere well that's sort of the thing if you're like why would anybody make this sort of bong and the sort of gimmick is imagine if you wanted to smoke more weed than you could fit in your lungs <laughs> like it t- it's too long it takes too long to inhale you have to get an entire lung full of weed smoke all in you all at the same time that's yeah. what a gravity bong is for yeah it's it's that it's also like you know when i was a kid i knew it as the bong i could use because i couldn't get a real one right um, it is it's also it's easy to make but it's also easy to make a regular bong i've made bongs out of like oh, wow. do things like bottles um, of like two liter soda so uh but anyway so i i did this like i didn't mean to i was like you know profusely apologizing to my roommates for like making the whole apartment smell like weed and stuff but i'm just like i'm sorry my mouth can't but i need this weed <laughs> i need these cannabinoids inside of me uh but then like a couple days later my landlord knocked on the door and was just like i gotta say are you guys smoking in here because there's like a smell that's been coming up to my apartment through the vents and i had to be like oh yeah i well i was doing it outside but really uh, i'll do it farther from the house now Ooh, sorry um but like basically right after that happened i got on my phone and wrote her an email with like the laundry list of like 15 things that were wrong slash dangerous in the apartment that needed to be fixed like <laughs> like hey our seek links our garbage disposal is not working the the outlet right next to the sink is wired with a hot neutral reverse and is not a gfi the le- the outlets in the living room and the bedrooms aren't grounded my god um that's a but, lot of stuff it was a lot of stuff and she did um she was very nice about it and fixed it promptly which was great um yeah. but it was and, and she's been very pleasant with us uh since then which has been great right um but it was just funny because it was you know it was literally like i i felt i felt so self-conscious that it's like oh no i just moved in here and now the landlord like is upset that i'm smoking weed in the house but hang on i will strike back with this list of shit that's bad about your apartment such a it's such a bummer like it 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 has to do something to the it it just i i think like a permanent low-level stress like when yeah. you are living in a place that has someone else's rules yeah like you pay for a space but you you have to like obey a uh, an essentially um uh uh 
what is the word like not random but um like it's it's all the whims of the landlord like it has nothing to do yeah. with the law like i'm no. like ah, i'm not allowed to murder in my apartment like like no <laughs> like my it written into my lease i have totally disregarded this and my landlord has been fine about it um but written into my lease is that like hey you can't really use the basement um oh, weird. and it's like why and the reason why is because like he's got a lot I of said. stuff down there yeah. and it's it's got a dirt um uh it's got a dirt uh, floor floor it's not it's it's got a dirt um foundation um and it's like my stuff's down there yeah. and there's like glass and nails and but i think it's mm. basically like if you step on a nail and get right. tetanus it's yeah. not my fucking fault because it's in your lease that you can't but that was not explicit <laughs> he basically was just like don't use the basement and i i have mm-hmm. and he's never said yeah. anything uh but it's like i don't know just like how and like don't don't smoke or like no pets or whatever and it's it just has to be a permanently stressful yeah, like thing on yeah, your my, mind yeah it, it it's crazy and i don't want to i i genuinely don't want to go off on a whole tear about Kyle, you're literally smoking weed in the woods like a teenager living with their parents. No, no, I'm not. Uh, well, first of all, that's the other thing. I'm currently four or five days into not smoking weed, and I'm miserable about it. How come? You just don't have any? Uh, just well, I, money's really tight, and yeah. I just I haven't been doing any of the things that I need to do. Right, because weed'll but then, do but that now, to you. But now, yeah, now I think I'm like extra depressed, probably first and foremost, or maybe not even first and foremost, but just in addition, you know, you, if, if you smoke as much weed as I do and then stop, it's going to affect you for at least a week or two. Um, and the other thing is I forgot where I was going with this. Reasons you're not smoking the way that you feel from not. Oh, smoking. oh, oh, it's I'm also extra depressed because it's like I haven't been smoking and yet I've been, let's say, five to ten percent more productive than I was like last week. So it's just so depressing to be like, I'm miserable. I just want to smoke weed and it's not even helping. I'm just sitting here doing nothing. What the fuck? Yeah, Which is exactly uh... what happened earlier in the quarantine when I tried to stop for a while. I've taken the um the first step in uh it's not I don't really I don't I don't care for um like there's a level of productivity where it's like you're maintaining your life uh and then there's a level where it's like yeah. you know the the rise and grind weirdos who are like you've always got mm-hmm. to be doing something yeah, no. to further yourself or whatever Yeah no I feel like my, my thing is I'm not I'm not reaching my own bell curve adjusted threshold for myself in terms of, you know, like I'm never going to be a rise and grind person, you're, but you're, like you're, I sh- you're trying to hit a minimum. Let me, let me put it this way. Um, when I took all of the cleaning products and stuff out from under the sink so that the guy could replace the garbage disposal, th- that was Four days ago, all that shit should probably be under the sink again and not still on the floor next to the sink. You got ADHD, right? <laughs> uh, w- um, actually, I'm not sure. I don't know. Probably do. I think you do. I'm joking. Of course, this is all we talk about. It's I like can't, comes I don't up know. every oh, time. Yeah. I, what? <laughs> look, I can't remember everybody's different things. Everybody That's has four have things. ADHD. It's 2020. No one's got no things anymore. Yeah, no. No, my thing, my biggest thing basically is the undiagnosed high functioning autism that I've been dealing with my entire life and never getting any support for. Are you on anything for the ADHD though? Uh normally, yes. Right now, no because I don't have a therapist or I don't have a psychiatrist because I'm just like on the waiting list for a place. Yeah. Um uh except so I don't have any stuff for that except for the like leftover ADHD meds from like uh, two other different ADHD prescriptions I had. So I, I have a few tabs of Adderall and a couple capsules of Vyvanse. Um, that could be part of your sort of executively dysfunct feeling. Not to diagnose you with having ADHD. Again. What uh, from, t- from taking those from not, no, from not taking them. Oh, well, certainly. Yeah. I, but but that's the thing is, like, I've also never been particularly helped 
by them. Yeah. Like, I, I think I think it's more like when I'm not on ADHD medication, I'm like, this is because I'm not on medication. I have to get on that medication to fix this. And then I get on the medication. And I'm like, I'm the same. What? Yeah. Well, so I haven't been on. I have ADHD. I haven't been on ADHD meds in 12 years or That's... something. Um, so it's been forever because I have always hated them. They've never they've never really helped. They've always made me feel weird. Uh, and I've always had bad side effects. And so I've always like had to um, figure out how to deal with ADHD without the medications, which is tough. But um like mm -hmm. the main the the number one thing has always been like am i not doing things because i'm depressed or am i not doing things because i have adhd or am i depressed because i'm not doing anything because i have adhd um, or are you not doing anything because you're depressed because of depression right right that was the first one am i depressed because of depression or am i depressed because of not doing of anything ADHD. because of adhd or or do you have adhd because you're depressed or uh, probably not that one, I don't think. But but the the, but the third one is people am I claim that saying and I don't also not it. doing anything because of depression and ADHD separately. Are they not interacting this? Because sometimes they're I'm not doing anything and depressed, and it's a combination. But sometimes I'm depressed and not doing anything, and they're separate, so I can fix one issue without <laughs> affecting the other, which is sometimes good and sometimes bad. Um, but. Um, Whatever. No one can do anything. It's all stupid. Yeah. Anyway, I, I uh, since my landlord came up, I, I was going to say, like, I don't want to get into another whole tear about why landlords shouldn't be a thing that a person can be. But like, I mean, just think about this. I live in a duplex house, a house that has two levels that are completely divided, totally separate, totally separate, fully functional living spaces that is owned by one person that is should not be allowed you shouldn't be one person who owns a like you literally could not utilize a duplex like right it would one be person, it's, theoretically it's impossible yeah like one person i mean like this is also insane but you could if you wanted to be crazy you could be like i own an apartment i i, I own a house in somerville and i own a house in quincy because i'm always in either somerville or quincy which is right next door uh and, but i just can't be bothered to drive back and forth every night so i'm just gonna have two houses like that's crazy but it is a logical path you could follow you literally could never need a duplex house in one spot so how is it allowed for one person to own a duplex? Well, I'll it's say I'll, here, I'll play I'll play devil's advocate to this. And let's say that I'm a married couple, but we both extremely prioritize our own space. <laughs> and so I buy a duplex and my partner no. lives in the other half of the duplex. So we have our own kitchens. We have our own uh, living rooms. We have all of our own stuff. Uh, and most of the, you know, and then, you know, if, if we ever want to go, if we ever want to like not be in the same bed at night, we can go to our other half. Mm. Like, I just want, I don't want to, maybe one of you likes watching TV at night and the other one doesn't. So like half the time you watch, uh, TV in bed and the other half you're at the, in the other side. Uh, I would say congratulations on finding a scenario more tortured and precarious than wanting separate houses in Somerville and Quincy. <laughs> I don't think that's tortured or precarious. I mean, I wouldn't do it. I, I, I definitely know think people who have like an extra bedroom that they use oh, yeah. as like a separate bedroom. But that's um, not that's totally the same as having two entirely and separate i'll living say spaces. this if someone was like if you press this button you and isaac have two different kitchens to keep clean and you're only responsible for your one i'd have that <laughs> button <laughs> uh poor isaac um he's fine it was his birthday yesterday oh happy birthday we got barbecue Ooh, nice yeah for, ooh, uh, mm, okay, never mind. I, I was going to be like, oh, from that place that we got barbecue that one nah. time, but that was when we were in Milton. That place so. ruled. That was a good place. That was a Do you remember really what that was good called? place. No, it was the, one of the Damn. only places that would deliver to Milton. So if I w went to, if I entered in that address, we could surely figure it out. Um, 
But yeah, that place had really good barbecue and really good sauce, and it was a pretty fair deal. Also, they did have their sauce was like better than the food almost. The sauce was a lot of times. So we went to a place yesterday. The barbecue sauce was really lackluster, which is like it's barbecue, Mm -mm. so you have fucked up. That the barbecue sauce is not very good. It was the the meat was very good and the sides are really good. But like sometimes I want a nice saucy bite. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I do. Mm. And Mm. really, it was kind of like I don't know. It tasted like tamarind, so it had like a nice fruit, but then also like burnt sugar. So it was like a tamarind and burnt sugar Mm. sauce. Um, And the other one was like a very very generic hot sauce kind of. Um, you know, could I could I make a critique of a lot of the American barbecue that I've had? Please. I mean, I know that this is the point, kind of, but maybe that's a problem. Over reliance on the sauce. Too often, I get some meat that's like tender but has no flavor, and I get yes. that I'm adding the flavor with yeah. the sauce. No. But like, you're come right. On. You're right, and they have made bad meat. Thank you. Um, when you cook that, when you cook that shit, it check. It's gotta be covered in rub. Put some fucking rub Put on there. Put some spices on your meat. Cook the meat for all day, and then you can add some sauce. Because, like, what do you want? <laughs> Slap some meat? rub on that porker. <laughs> what do you want? Some bland meat covered in a tasty sauce, or do you want delicious meat with Get a tasty sauce? Get the fuck out of here. It's both. You want the you want a taste magnification, is what I think. I'm I'm choosing to call it now. I'm taste magnification. If I wanted some bland meat, I'd date blank damn it yeah who's the like most boring <laughs> celebrity to i don't know uh is it it was chris I, pine you know, is is he over <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah sure <laughs> we over chris pine is he the bland meat <laughs> yeah i would say so okay uh i've never you know, seen I, a movie with honestly, him in it i just know who he is you know, because the problem I really fucked up was my brain immediately went to Shia LaBeouf. But the problem is Shia LaBeouf. Nah, he's not bland. bland. No. It's, it's just nuts. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> do you want some beef jerky? Like, this is just salt. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Chris Pine, you know, nothing did. I, I think nothing made Chris Pine more famous than the famous Chris's meme where he was the least famous Chris in the meme. <laughs> I've never heard that. There is like there's like Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, and then they put Chris Pine Ooh. in there. And it yeah. was like, look at all these handsome Chris's. But it's yeah, like but Chris Pine mm-hmm. was the least famous of those three Chris's. And I but, think he benefited a lot from that. But could I could I say this though? Yeah. I'll take a Chris Pine over a Chris Evans any day of the week. Oh yeah, I can't stand I mean, Chris it, Evans. Sorry, in a in a movie. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah okay sure i mean yeah, yeah. i mean like but i didn't was say like, chris pine chris evans for bland meat because everyone loves him so it wouldn't have it wouldn't have worked it wouldn't have worked yeah uh you know he's got a kind of a timothy oliphant vibe Tim, chris pine yeah they have a similar Explain. they sometimes have similar hair they have a similar face shape they have a similar gaze Tim of the Oliphant is obviously older and yeah. is uh but I think that I think that it, I think in a few years we'll see Chris Evans or sorry Chris Pine becoming becoming a Tim of the Oliphant. Uh sorry, I just cracked up I remembering. I don't even I I'm not even sure where it comes from. I just know in the grinder at some point someone says the elephant in the room, and it's just good. <laughs> uh, it's I mean that is definitely something that um, the brother says. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why can't I? Why am I blanking on on his name? Um. But God, yeah, that I is think... such a good show. Anybody? I'm hey, still ringing that bell. Anybody who hasn't seen the grinder yet. Fuck! It's, Go watch it the is still the best comedy since that came out. There still I, has not been a better comedy than that. Uh, I I can't think of something that made me. Yeah. The only thing that, that I would laugh put more in the grinder. The only thing that I would put in good in, place is cl- close. Maybe it it's is not even close. It's not even I don't close. Know. It's not even. It's a, not, it's even, not even the same kind of show. No. It's a lot less funny. 
Uh, it might. Yeah. It is like you could make an argument to me that it's a better show, and then I would say, "Do mm. you do you remember the fourth season?" And then you go, "Oh, right, the fourth season was bad." Um, Haven't gotten there. Uh, the first season is uh, the fourth season is fine. It is just obviously the worst movie, and it's a show that sets up so many different like big ideas that like are just impossible mm. to answer. So it's like, how do you end a show? who is who is a show who's Ooh. trafficking in ideas that have no real answers no real satisfying okay. so it, it, and then i think uh, i think you should leave is is one that is like that's funny or that in the same realm as the grinder but it's again a totally different kind of show it's a yeah sketch it's a comedy. sketch show and even that that came to my mind i think we talked about this before i i liked that show i definitely recommend it but it's not like I don't put that up there in terms of like, ooh, some of the best comedies of the last year. It's, I mean, it's, I think it's the second best. I can't think of another thing that's even close like, to I get, Like, funny. this also isn't a show that's as funny or nearly as funny as The Grinder or even probably The Good Place, but I, I definitely like Detroiters way more than... I gotta watch uh, that. I think but you should leave. There, there just has not been a lot of good comedy in the last five or six no. years. And I can't imagine why. There's so much to laugh about. So anyways, I think comedians got to do their job and be funny still. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would say so. Yeah. So step it up. TV. Uh, put better. Put better comedies on. Put better comedies on. Unless you want to. Oh, did you want to make the thir- 33rd cop show that's on? Ooh, do you want to have the 33rd uh, simultaneous hmm. cop show be on? Or do you want to do a funny well, comedy? I oh, mean, both we, we at go- the same time. You want it to be a well, cop comedy? Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Um. Hey. 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 Um. Gosh, I just have that. Uh, I have that feeling like I had a good thing that I wanted to say five minutes ago, but it's long gone and it's never coming back. So video games, uh, video games, video games. I also, oh, I mean, we can. I think we definitely need to talk about video games. But after yeah, we talk I about agree. video, I can I can run you off a co- uh, some shows I've been watching. If you want to wrap back around to them after video games, okay, sure. I I've been watching. I finally got around to watching The Boys. Uh, and I've been watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and, um, I mean, and k and Little Witch Academia and Space Runaway Ideon, but I don't think any of those would interest you very much. Video games. Sorry, I was writing down to remember to go back to the shows. Uh, I, I have a, uh, what did you think about, I, just like a quick, the boys seem- No, we'll get- well, I know. We'll get back to it. Okay. That's a, that's a little taste. You want to know what I think about the boys? Come on back after our video game discussion. Keith, tell I me about the new consoles. I didn't like it. I can't we'll find tell out. you. Don't you wait for it. Okay. Something is happening, Kylie, in video games and it's consoles. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. Console I've season. heard about those. <laughs> Gosh, Keith, I just, I can't. Uh, hmm. Uh, I've just been... I'm so tired. I've been run ragged the the past week trying desperately to get a pre-order for either an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5. And it's just so hard. And I've been, ooh, just really breaking myself to get it in there because I need to have one. Why? For all the great games that are going to come out at launch. Like what? Uh, Name two. Well, the PlayStation 5 is going to have Spider-Man Miles Morales, and that is just a PlayStation 4 game with a different protagonist, but it was certainly a good one. Some might even have called it the game of the year. And um, I think I think they both have Madden. Hmm. It sounds like you actually weren't doing this. I wasn't. You got you caught me in a fib. Uh, I was actually I was actually extremely scoffing at all those people tweeting about how hard it was to get a pre-order cuz I was like, "You motherfuckers have been screaming your heads off all year about how few launch games there are and how stupid it is that these consoles are coming out this year. Yeah. What are you doing?" And and how people don't even feel like they don't even feel like people are ready for a new console. No. No. 
It's so, just uh, it's just stupid. My, These people have nothing interesting to talk about. Yeah. My my This is the best stance. video game podcast in the world. <laughs> my official stance on uh pre-ordering pre-ordering a console is I will pre-order an Xbox Series X next year when Halo comes out. I I'll do I'll be I'll be more generous. I'll be the voice of uh the voice of the um I don't know. Here here just to prove that we're not like angry console angry people i would have pre-ordered an xbox series x the if day Halo that those coming out it, yeah i did i so it was like seven in the afternoon and i saw it and it, on the day that the xbox came out and i saw someone being like i saw a headline being like oh the xbox launch sold out like they said it wouldn't or something and um so I was like, oh, I guess I'm Sorry, not doing I'm... that today. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, oh, you, oh, you're saying you would have pre-ordered a yeah, Series yeah, X, sure, but it... just that, like, by the time you woke up, they were already filled. Yeah, or by the time that, like, you know, I woke up at noon. I didn't go online. I was doing other stuff. I went online. I saw that they were all sold out, and then went, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah like i i will i will say if i had a bunch of money like if i had as much money this november as i normally have in a november then i probably or i shouldn't say probably i maybe would buy one i was definitely gonna get one when it was gonna have halo right but like as soon as they said no halo this year and like money is so tight i was just like oh great that means i don't have to get an xbox this year well so I have been saving, um, I've been saving GameStop gift cards at, that from family members who are like, he ah. likes video games, we'll just get, we'll just get him a GameStop gift card for Christmas or his yeah. birthday or whatever. So I have, I already have like $300 worth of, holy shit, GameStop gift cards saved up from, uh, December tw- 2018. Um, wow. so like that Christmas birthday, the Christmas after, and I think, oh, all Keith is, all Keith's relatives are rich. Most of this came from, it, from the, from our side of the, the family, <laughs> from the one that we share. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I got, I, I, someone gave me like a $50 gift card. Like it gives me like a $50 game stop gift card, like every Christmas on like at our family christmas thing and then i got like a a second one that i don't normally get like last Mm. year um and then yeah the last like hundred is from my side or my my uh my paternal side anyway um the uh oh um but so okay i really have not been you know, because I don't give a shit because these consoles aren't going to have any games. Right. Um, I haven't been following it. So I actually don't like I know you you said you I think the way you put it was you wanted to podcast about console launch information or something announcements. Yeah. Uh, like, can you like run it down for me? What do these things cost and stuff? OK, so this is where things get kind of interesting. So for. These things are coming out in. Oh, in two and months, less way, than two sorry, months. Microsoft bought Bethesda, right? Microsoft bought bought the Bethesda's parent company. Wow. So Bethesda and everything else that this parent company owned. Yeah. Um, well, so, I, yes. but I think and I then think everything that I, Bethesda owns wasn't isn't Bethesda the only thing that was relevant to Microsoft in terms of like Xbox? Uh, like, does Zenimax have some shit that is useful for? microsoft else is was it id that came along with bethesda is that the thing yeah it it is underneath Bethesda. like to my knowledge everything that zenimax has that is video game related is under the bethesda umbrella yeah well okay so that's sort of um it's it's true it's true mostly because zenimax developed um Elder Scrolls Online, but the, the Zenimax studio that developed Elder Scrolls Online got folded into Bethesda Game Studios very recently. Gotcha. So there, I guess there's something to do with Zenimax that is still like able to put resources into developing games directly, not tied to Bethesda. It's unclear whether all of that was folded into Bethesda recently with the Elder Scrolls thing. 
Um, that's that is my understanding of it anyway. Now, and have they announced? Have they? Did they say anything about like what they're gonna do with it? No, nope. make games. Okay. Um, well, so here's Phil the, Spencer. What, Phil Spencer came out. Okay. People were like, "But what about?" People were, were basically like, "I only will ever buy a Sony system." What about Skyrim? And yeah. Phil Spencer what said... What about Skyrim 2? <laughs> what about the next remaster of Skyrim? Yeah, yeah, that's that's sort of what... Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Phil Spencer was sort of like, these games may come out on other consoles on a case-by-case basis. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking, because, like, obviously your mind would immediately go to, holy shit, Fallout and the Elder Scrolls are now xbox exclusives that's wild but also well first of all they're putting all their games on pc now anyways and then they're already putting minecraft on everything that they can get their hands on so there's no tell like microsoft 2020 microsoft is fucking on some wild shit the microsoft strategy is the microsoft strategy is to is to be a little worm that gets all of its shit onto other Mm -hmm. platforms yeah and but then also make the xbox uh, more appealing by being cheaper and games pass so it's, you're playing microsoft yeah. shit whether you've got a playstation or not or an xbox but if you've got an xbox you're subscribed to game pass and um you know that is d- depend like we know from the you know gym membership theory that like you will end up losing money on mm-hmm. games pass over time unless you're a very yeah. small percentage of people i, I already that am. We fall into i'm not i'm still way ahead on games pass oh no i'm i i have put so much money into games pass that i have not gotten out of it really i sh- i should honestly cancel it like right now i've been playing i mean just in the last couple months i've been playing halo on pc i've been playing crusader kings i mean that was like a thing that i didn't i was about to drop 60 three? dollars on crusader kings 3 but three it's, yeah it's games pass what? Yeah. See, that's the what? thing. The reason you're losing money on Games Pass is because you're not looking at the games they've got because they yeah, have Crusader Kings yeah. 3. And yeah. oh, Microsoft Flight Sim. That's the other one. So like, uh, right, yeah. just in the last three months, I've been playing $180 worth of games for, for 15 bucks. Um, it's cool. Yeah. So, you know, um, not to, yeah. it's hard not to talk about Games Pass and, uh, or sorry, it's hard to talk about Games Pass and not make it sound like a pitch for Games Pass. Um, yeah, but I'm constantly just playing games for essentially nothing on there. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, it's still it uh, like I don't know. Like Games Pass is definitely a great deal, and you know, like I recommend it to people. You know, because people come to me because they know that I know about video games, and they're like, "Hey, Kylie, video games, tell me about them." And I'm like, "If you got an Xbox, get that Game Pass." Um, yeah. But it still makes my skin crawl a little bit when I hear people being so effusive about Game Pass because I just feel like games as a service, it's just like a road to further like diminish what developers are getting out of the games that they produce. Um, that's and, yeah, that's something that we don't really know. My, I have I have not heard anybody like, I yeah like ash their I, games I, their Games Pass deal yeah um like that has i would say yeah you're right like i from what i've heard developers have mostly been fairly positive about services like game pass up to this point but that is i mean it's literally what we're talking about is microsoft's entire strategy right now is changing themselves into a giant green x-shaped trojan horse yeah so like okay this is this is interesting you say trojan horse is interesting sorry do you do you you have a more point on top of that no that was basically my point is like i hope the whole point of games pass is that it's a loss leader so it's like you know they lose money at first and then they make it up later so so here's here's the thing for me because like that it's like okay how is games pass a loss leader so Traditionally, consoles were loss leaders, right? And they right. still are. These companies kind are of. losing money. Like, they, uh, maybe not much. Maybe not supposedly much. Supposedly not as much as they used to be. Yeah. Uh, it, apparently, it, console manufacturers have been like tightening up the profit margin on those. Yeah. It, it might be not much, but it's like they're not making like a 15% profit on Xbox is being sold. Maybe they're breaking, breaking even. I don't know if like the, and we'll get to this, but the, the uh, lower priced Xbox series S 
mm-hmm. is a better or worse deal for them. Like, I don't know how that math shakes out. I would guess worse. Mm, I would guess worse. Um, uh, but so then now you've got. So but the idea was they would sell games and the games would be the profit maker. And so now right. you've got a loss leader inside of a loss leader. And so I think the thing that video games coverage is missing is that video game companies are not video game companies, especially Microsoft. Like, we yeah. essentially do yeah, not right. know where the money Microsoft makes comes from. Like, because we know that it's not sales or we know that it's not just sales and that when well, a company gets to be the size of Microsoft, it is receiving money from all over the place and all mm-hmm. different ways. And so we've moved into a phase where Microsoft thinks that an Xbox can be profitable, even if even if the, they're losing money on uh, the Xbox itself, losing money on Games Pass, and pay, paying developers to not charge money for their games by putting them on Games Pass. Yeah. And so you know, where is that money coming from? The, well, the only thing that we're, we're positive on is that it is going to be coming from somewhere. <laughs> well, the thing the thing is that the way that might like when you buy an Activision game for your Xbox, Microsoft makes money from that because yeah. Activision has to pay them a licensing fee for each copy of a game they sell for an Xbox console. So that is where Microsoft money on paper primarily comes from. I don't know if the numbers actually work out that well, way. Xbox I assume money. they would. Xbox money, right. Microsoft is making money. You're right. Oh, okay, sure. When you're talking about Microsoft making money all over the place, like Microsoft, Microsoft like capital M Microsoft, the whole right. Microsoft, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah you're so right. This is, this is where, this is, sorry, I forgot to connect it to the Trojan horse thing. Like, it is, it's not just Xbox uh, as a Trojan horse for other, like, sticking its, you know, money tentacles into other spaces but also like how is my microsoft making money for sorry how's xbox making money for microsoft in ways that we just can't see right um that and, like we couldn't yeah. even guess maybe yeah and and it's probably honestly not even it's probably not even accurate at this point maybe to call games pass a loss leader like i don't know like when they announced games pass it felt like how how would they ever make money on this? And now, like yeah. I said, that I haven't used a Game Pass game practically in like the last six months, I'm like, oh, that's how. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Um, it's and it's it's hard to know it's hard to know how that shakes out for like the average user. I know that we we've we've talked about stats where like um like is it the 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 median consumer plays like two or three games over yes. the course of a console like the I heard whole that, console lifespan that was i think i heard that statistic Old like statistic w- but yeah like way back in like 06 07 maybe even 05 but, but yeah the statistic was like most people buy 2.5 games per console that they own and so if that crazy it would be like two things either that is still true or it's not true but if we I, I, if we take it as an exact like how many more games is someone going to play if they don't have to pay for it or is it just like hmm. people don't have the space or the interest in playing right 20 games like two games a year for 10 years but they still have uh, an xbox yeah um i i so this is my guess because when we're talking about we're talking about 05, 06, 07. That was like, that was right before video games exploded. Um, so I bet, I bet people buy more games now. Cause like, I think back then the 2.5 games was like Madden GTA and a third to be named later or something. Yeah. Call uh, of Duty. And yeah. And it's, it was well, no Call of Duty wasn't even that popular back then, or it wasn't that annual. Uh, it was but, about to yeah. be, that was, that was the, yeah. that was modern warfare right modern warfare was 09 okay yeah oh no sorry that was modern warfare 2 you're right 07 was yeah. for modern warfare um but anyways yeah i i think i bet the console attach rate is way up oh especially because digital games have happened now you can buy a game right. for five bucks right. or whatever attach rate um, that's the word i couldn't think of that attach word i was trying rate. to think of it yeah don't you love it yeah good word 
Um, <laughs> so okay, so this is this is the this is the the quick version of the Xbox like um, not sales pitch, but this is this is like this is what they have on offer, right? You've got essentially no big launch game. You have a don't even hey knock off that essentially <laughs> like come on come back to me revise uh, well, that I, one it's just i don't remember off the top of my head if there really I, is nothing there really is nothing okay um i don't have i, think, I don't have like a list honestly things, i think so. i think like the most appealing thing was like the new assassin's creed it was wild let me let me pull it up here uh because I, I saw actually a graphic someone made where they put box art images of all the games coming out for PS5 and Xbox, and it was, like, so fucking bleak. Okay, so so you you look up this list, see if there's anything that sticks out as, like, a big thing. But you've got a 4K-ready... Uh, you've got a 4K-ready $500 system called the Xbox Series X, and then you have a 1440-ready uh system it is it the implication is that these 1440. are 1440 right so by 900 what's that wait oh no sorry is that 4k what is that no that is like 2.5k yeah it's bigger than 1080 yeah. it's it's you know it's like 35 percent bigger than 1080 or something i've just never it is I a very common mo- like like TV and monitor size. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, it, I know 1440 monitors, monitors are TV. great. Yeah. Like honestly, that is the thing that people should be looking into if they don't feel like 4K makes sense for them. Like if they yeah. have if they're if they're watching TV on their couch, they don't need a 4K TV. They what they no. should get is a 1440, the thing that is like n- noticeably better, but also not really more expensive than a 1080 monitor. Anyway, so it's 1440 ready. The 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 thing that I the, my understanding is that they're trying to say that these two consoles have the same performance when one is at 1440 and one is at 4K. Mm-hmm. Like and that is like if you That's have really interesting. Yeah, it is pretty interesting. That's a three hundred dollar console and it's much smaller. It's teeny tiny, and, teeny and tiny. Really? So small. You haven't seen the size of it. It's no, the I haven't size. Seen it. it is like. It is closer in the size to a Wii U than to an Xbox One. It's like halfway okay, between well, those two. It's tiny. Okay, I'm seeing it here. You're right. It's small. I wouldn't have called that teeny tiny. I was thinking like, oh well, picture like, your like Xbox. An Amazon Fire TV. I don't know. I think of your Xbox One though. Oh, I'm thinking of it. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a beefy boy. Uh, so you've got you got that the Xbox Series X, by the way. Much smaller than it looks too. It's got strange dimensions because it's a it's a cuboid. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I, I was like, I found a great word for cuboid recently. You ready for it? Uh huh. Um, wait, is cuboid a real word? Yeah, cuboid is a thing that is like a cube. So like, uh, you know, a like a, a cube, cube, a rectangular cube would be a cuboid. Um, like a GameCube, GameCubeoid is really what it yeah, was. Yeah. Uh, you ready? It's rectangular parallelepiped. <laughs> Dude. I'm a parallelepiped. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. You know. Um, rectangular Oh, oh, cubo. oh. About my, about my weed usage, though. Yeah? Uh, last night, I did find, like, a only one-third smoked joint in my box of weed stuff and looked at it like it was gold. <laughs> oh, Sorry, there's more. I do have these are the other one. Oh, you found it. Wait, wait, how much did you find? A uh, uh, only one third smoked joint. <laughs> are you saving it or are you going to use it and break your streak? Uh, I'm honestly, I'm probably just saving it for after we do this podcast. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I figured it was more interesting for me to come on having not smoked any weed recently than all of the other recordings we've done where I'm smoking weed on the recording. That's the one. That is the best thing about recording in person is I can tell you not to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, more um, words for us for a cu- for a rectangular cube: hyper rectangle and an orthotope. An orthotope. Yeah, an n orthotope. 
one word. Uh, M dash orthotope. Oh, yeah. Weird. Uh, anyway, so I so those, those are the systems. Uh... Four four K ready, five hundred dollars. Fourteen forty ready is um three hundred dollars. And the sort of twist, first of all, interesting pricing. I think that the five hundred dollar system is about what people were expecting for the next gen. Yes. I think yes. people so were the, like the three hundred I think the three hundred dollar, that's a big that's like a coup to me. It, that's huge. Yes, it's huge. It's huge. And it is also and here's the thing. It I I I can feel that this will easily be attacked as an underpowered system. I think that's mm-hmm. totally wrong. I think it's a I, I, if I understand correctly, like the idea that these are equivalent power when one is on fourteen forty and one is at four four uh, k, that seems like a really good deal. It seems like an almost yeah, an unbelievable like, deal. Yeah, I'm like I'm already I'm hearing that and going like no disk drive. I, I don't fucking need four k. No disk drive though. I also don't need a disk drive. Yeah, honestly, um, I like I I understand the the thing of like digital games are way less consumer friendly than physical games. Yeah, but like literally here, let me list for you all of the physical Xbox One games I own: Guitar Hero Live, Halo Five. They all I rhyme, by the way. I think that's it. <laughs> Really, I've just, got like I think it's just those two. I've got like twenty physical games, something like that. Twenty twenty five. No, um, probably twenty. Probably closer to twenty. Yeah. Well, I think the the difference between you and me is that I already have several tote bins worth of physical games from older generations, so I am highly incentivized to stop buying more physical games. Yeah, you have a huge game collection. I have like a normal game. I have like. I've got a couple hundred yeah. games from from the last two decades. I'll, I'll say this: you do a great job hiding them because I don't see that many games when I go to your house. Uh, yeah, I have a, I have a, I have a second coffee table upstairs that has my arcade cabinet on it, and there's a drawer under there that is full of games. So uh, I have a list of launch. Ti- no, this. I have one more be... thing before your launch titles. Here's the twist no, for the Xbox. Don't worry. Yeah, what's what's that? The thing the the twist is payment plans ah so you sign up for a payment plan and i don't have any of the details on what exactly that means uh i don't have the i I don't have what it means to not pay that what do they do if you don't pay it do they take your xbox probably not (laughs) they probably just sell your debt to a collector yeah Um, i think it's the same as smartphone payment plans yeah like so uh no interest and it's actually you come out uh, like twenty bucks ahead because they give you Game Pass with it. Um, so it's twenty five dollars a month for the S and thirty five dollars a month for the X. No, no money down. So twenty five dollars a month, no money down, and I get Game Pass. Yes, for ha- for two years or is That's that one ludicrous? Year? It's for, for I'm already for paying year. fifteen. I'm already paying fifteen dollars a month for Game Pass. That's only ten dollars right. more a month, and yeah. I get a yeah. Xbox. The deal is insane. It's it's it is. Here's the thing: they really want you to buy an Xbox. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so that that is the thing. Like when when Phil Spencer says that Bethesda games may or may not come to other platforms on a game by game basis, the the real the secret message he is saying is. If the Xbox One sells as well or better than the PS5, they will be exclusive. If the PS5 kicks the Xbox ass again, then they will probably put the next Elder Scrolls on PS5. There's, I mean, there's also, I think, the very likely reality of a timed exclusive, maybe six months, maybe a year. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, it's like it's once once they are sure that nobody else is buying a new Xbox to get Elder Scrolls, then, then they put it on, it on PS5. on PS5, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I do have these. Uh, okay, so let's just hear games. the Xbox ones, and then we'll talk about the PS the PS Five. Okay. Um, Hand curated <laughs> list, by the way. This is fucking insane. Uh, Philip Martinez, uh, writing for Newsweek, should be summarily executed for this hot take. Um, just because you won't be able to play as Master Chief this year doesn't mean the Xbox Series X won't have plenty of titles for gamers to get engrossed in. That's... Well, that... that I mean, no. that is the Microsoft ad copy. 
<laughs> right. The Microsoft Microsoft that like Microsoft sent Newsweek a thing saying that word for word. Fair, okay, almost fair definitely enough. because well, of games Keith, pass because you open but, your box you've got games pass boom hundreds of games for right free. but listen keith it's not just new i know i said newsweek and you're like what does somebody at newsweek know about video games but keep in mind that uh one philip martinez writes for the sub label of news geek so i mean that's you're They've got to be an expert. Yeah, this is an authority on the subject. It's an authority on the subject. Here are your Xbox uh, Series S slash X launch titles. Um, and, and keep in mind, uh, these are not um, exclusives. I don't think any of these are exclusive. Like, these are coming out on Xbox One as well, and PS5, most of them. Uh, so here we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, Bright Memory, I don't know what that is. Dirt 5, FIFA 21, Fortnite, whoop, whoop. Uh, Gears Tactics, uh, Marvel's Avengers, um, Observer System Redux, so that that is a remaster of a game that already exists. Yeah, several um, of these, by the way, are already out yes. on Xbox uh, One. Tetris Effect Connected, uh, which I mean, Tetris Effect is great, but of course that is just Tetris, and it was it's already been out. Uh, the Falconeer, which I haven't heard of, is that is that that just that VR game where you're a falconer, but not but this time not in VR. I don't know what a game called the Falconeer. I don't know what that is. Um, and Watch Dogs Legion, uh, the game where you get to convince cops to join the revolution by like paying for their medical debts or whatever wait um, sorry that's a launch game the Watch Dogs game apparently oh that's that's slightly interesting and here is here is here's the one i am the most interested in yakuza like a dragon and that's all of them okay okay so there's two there's Watch Dogs and yakuza yes okay but but again, but watch, you wouldn't like, know it here, here. Like, okay. I have a hard time thinking of either of these as big games. And these are games like, I'm not convinced at all that, that the Xbox series SX versions of these games are going to be like notably better looking than the Xbox One versions. I would almost imagine... I would yeah. almost expect them to just be well, ports. I think part of this is that... I I feel like we've we've, no, we, we've known... We always know this and always forget. But console launches are dog shit. I know. They're always dog shit. They always have been. And this is another thing that we know but have forgotten. And it's tough because you've got to cover... People have to cover that new new systems are coming out, and they have to say things about them, right? And so I, it leads you to saying things like "there's no big games," and it's true, and it does feel <sighs> weird that there's no big games. But but that's not the way that that's not the sort of games that get really made anymore. There's not there aren't that many big console sellers. Like I feel like we went over this four years ago. Not you and I, but like as a as a as a as a video game bubble where people are talking to each other and thinking similar things i feel like we talked about that like the death of the system seller like half a decade ago um yes you're right but but th this is the thing I, and i was kind of on your side about all this like i was on twitter being like guys it's a console launch like shut the hell up like what are you new like come on yeah uh but that was before halo got delayed and this is the thing it's like it's not that the Xbox lineup doesn't have any system sellers. It literally doesn't have any next gen exclusives. Yeah. All of these games are coming to previous consoles that most people already own. That is unprecedented. Yeah. It's a weird, I, to be fair, it's a weird year. Not just because yeah, of people being out of work, not just because yeah. people can't make video games because they had to stay home because of COVID, but also like supply chains are all fucked up. Um, and like people don't have jobs <laughs> like they did um and so like yeah. i don't i don't want to i don't want to come across like i'm cutting 
um, the Xbox any slack here? Because really what I'm saying is like, uh, like, you know, it's very easy to bash these console launches for being what they were always going to be. Yeah. Just treat it like it was inevitable because it was. Yeah. And tell people not to buy them because that's, I mean, that's what, that's what a lot of mainstream video game coverage yeah. is, 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 is wanting to do. People want, like, a lot of the people covering video games, the thing that they want to do is tell people whether or not to buy something. Uh, or, like, tell them, mm, I don't want to be unfair. Like, I don't want to sound like pe a lot of people have nothing to offer besides, like, a, like def saying definitely a buy. But, um, <laughs> but also, like, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Not all, not all games coverage, but a, almost all of the the biggest coverage is this. Um, and you know, I like I. So let's get into the PS Five, unless PS5. you had something else about the Xbox. Uh, well, I was gonna say that if I'm putting on my extra reasonable hat, and I'm making a lot of, I'm making huge guesses here. Sure. But I would imagine that a console launch is the kind of thing where you need to spin up manufacturing nearly a year ahead of time or like you at least need to start working on that sort of thing. And, you know, it's like maybe the pandemic hits and at first they are not sure if it's going to be a quick thing or not. And then all of a sudden, whoops, we blinked and now like it's really not a great idea to release these consoles, but we are, we were going to lose millions of dollars by simply not putting these out and waiting till next year. Yeah. So let's just put it out and we'll take the bad press, which no one will care about because nobody buys consoles the year that they come out. And then, then when halo comes out and then when whatever the next PS five thing, when Spider-Man two comes out, uh, we'll already have plenty of units on store shelves for people to go snap up or whatever. Yeah, like, I get it. And it's just it's just a bad look, is all. I think I think there's some truth to this, to what I'm about to say. Um, but I think it's been slightly overblown. Uh, it is. Before before I say okay, it's extremely interesting that these consoles are coming out in like six weeks, and we just <laughs> ju just. Two months before they're launching, learned what they cost, and even mm. really have seen. No one That's had seen unusual, the Series actually. S until two weeks. Or sorry, two that months. That was wild. No one had even gotten confirmation that it existed <laughs> until yeah. like two weeks ago. Yeah, and there's ru there's rumors that there's a third skew too. That there's a middle Ooh. skew that is the four oh, K four K discless. I don't know if that's. I haven't seen anything about that since there is ru rumors like two oh, weeks ago but sorry you mean the xbox series xs <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that people are buying the xbox one x on amazon <laughs> because no! <laughs> oh! yeah the day that pre-orders for the amazon uh for the day that pre-orders went up for the series x xbox one x sales shot up like 750 percent <laughs> Oh my god, Microsoft, you fucking well, okay. total idiots. <laughs> in in their defense, it is possible that there's some people out there with money burning a hole in their pocket who were raring to buy a new console and when they found out they couldn't get the new Xbox went, "Ah, eh, there's no games for it anyways. I'll get the better Xbox one or something but, but yeah what the fuck 750 <laughs> percent it's a lot of seven percent. and a half times the usual people buying well, an xbox hang Series on X. though how many people i mean this is uh, presumably 700 percent over like last month or something like how many people were buying series x's xbox sorry how jesus christ microsoft yeah see you can't how even many, say it let alone i can't even talk about these consoles i know how many people were buying a one x last month probably what 10 people so this year so today it was 70 people i don't know whatever i mean but why uh, who knows yeah my, i mean my guess i would have guessed something the world's big i would have guessed something more like we're talking about the difference between like uh like 500 and 4,000. 
Sure. Like if that's um, the scale, that's bad. Um, but anyway, I don't so, know. So, I, I'll say this. Uh, was, sh- fuck, it jumped out of my head. You'll say this. I'll say it. PS Five. Two skews. Two skews. Two skews. This I had not heard. Big, oh, really? Big. Big one. It's big. It's really big, actually. I'm surprised at how big it is. The Oh, this. The, the PS5. It's big. It's big. It's a big Fi- one. It's, and it's sorry. weirdly shaped, and I think it looks stupid as hell. <laughs> yeah, physically big. I think it looks very stupid. Yeah, it looks stupid. Um, I saw people, you know, when they, when a long time ago, when we saw them for the first time, you know, months and months ago. Uh, or maybe not months and months, maybe just like three months. It's hard to remember when time happened. God, yeah, time doesn't exist anymore. Um, people were saying that it looked like uh, like an eighty dollar router, like wireless router, and it pretty much does. It looks like a Wi Fi router, <laughs> um, and it looks bad. It looks stupid. It looks like a ra- Wi Fi router called like the Nighthawk or something. Um, I I thought the it Xbox just needs like eight antennas coming out I thought of it. The Xbox Series X looked dumb <laughs> and weird, and then when I saw the extremely overdesigned PS5, I was like, you know what? I actually like how the Xbox Series X looks. Yeah, I I became more positive on the Series X after the I saw the five. So um, I sorry, real quick, I just like uh, I think on a podcast, Jeff Gersman recently talked about a router that he bought about like intentionally buying the most overpriced thing he could find. He's like, it looks so stupid. It looks like if I flipped it over, it would scuttle away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the so the PS Five has two SKUs. Uh, it's the it's five hundred dollars. There was a lot of um. There was a lot of talk about... I was going to say this earlier, but we got sidetracked. Um, there was a lot of talk about how there was like some chicken being played with the pricing here. And that no one wanted to right. be the first one to say how much their thing cost. Mm-hmm. Um, so the PS5 only was... An, it was only announced like 10 days ago what the thing cost. And it's going to be out in like 40 days. Um, and... It's five hundred. It's five hundred bucks, and there's a discless one for four hundred bucks. There's no difference in power. There's no. It's the same thing, but with a slightly different shape because there's no disc drive, and they sort of just like sliced it off um, the body of the thing. Uh, so I guess it is a different. It is a different shape. There it is like a separate. It has to like go through some sort of different manufacturing because it's it's got a different body shape to it slightly, but. Um, that was sort of thing, like I don't know. What do you think about there being an extremely compelling, like slightly underpowered? Uh, I don't want to say underpowered because it's plenty powerful. Slightly less, slightly less powerful. Yeah, a a, a two a three hundred dollar non four K Xbox Series. Uh, is that what it's called? Just an Xbox Series? Well, that's the thing. They won't say. If I'm talking about both, do I, I call them the Xbox Series? This is the thing. I think that this is they you know rumors for years every like the last two or three Xboxes it was always the rumor was going to be the next one's just going to be called Xbox. And I think this is what they're trying to do. I think they want Xbox to just yeah, be have, a brand moving forward like iPhone they have and it's always just like bungled it. They they totally did. Yeah. yeah. Like the the X and S thing is so bad. Like it was terrible on the Xbox One. Yeah, it was already X bad. X and S sound Every the same. Every Xbox has been named worse. This is the this is the worst any video game anything has been named ever. Nothing has. I feel I feel totally good about being uh, hyperbolic here. Nothing has been more <laughs> poorly named and no naming convention more poorly conceived than Xbox from start to finish. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Yeah. What? Like, Xbox, fine. Xbox 360, what? Wait, Xbox wait. One, hold on. Xbox Series <laughs> X. <laughs> And and then when you when you add the Xbox One X in between the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X, it's just a nightmare. It's I a mean, nightmare. The people, I I think it's got to be Sorry. like the people who are in charge of this would be losing their jobs if they weren't so high up that they can't lose their jobs. Like clearly, <laughs> whoever is doing this is is only able to continue it because he cannot be fired. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I think they just, I think for them, it was when they released the Series X and then the Series S was when the, the public narrative on the Xbox One turned around. So I think to them, it's like, that's our ticket. We got to stick with that. Um, no, you well, said it I wrong would... already, though. The no. Xbox oh, One sorry. S yep. and yep. Xbox One X. You got me. Yeah. Yes. That is what I meant. You're right. <laughs> uh, so, oh. so oh, my, what my I thinking say, here. Sorry, my I, thinking I here. Finish my point. And okay. I, or I, I was. I was. I can't remember if I finished asking the question. What do you think about this? This uh, non 4K ready, two hundred dollar cheaper um, Xbox versus like is that? A, what do you think about the Wait. compellingness of that argument, where it's three hundred dollars but not 4K ready versus the four hundred dollar discless PS5? So I, I had to, I missed when you gave me the, the information. So the, am I to understand the two PS5 SKUs are a $500 one with a disc drive and a $400 one without a disc drive? Yes. Yeah. And you, I, if, if anybody out there is going, I thought a disc drive only costs like $3 to manufacture. <laughs> yeah, it, you are right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is. It's a totally invented distinction. Um, I, so you, you're asking me, essentially do i think an xbox series s is a much more compelling offer than yeah a, they're than making a whatever gamble. the lower ps5 is they're making a gamble that having an underpowered system that is significantly cheaper is going to be a more compelling offering than just a discless version of the the bigger system and i wonder if you think that that what I think it is, is come of that. I think it's such a compelling offer that they couldn't have put a disk drive in it or nobody would have bought a Series X. Or nobody oh would, God, I would say. Oh god, you're I, totally right. Yeah. Cuz I cuz in my I've been thinking of, <laughs> I've been thinking this because here's the problem that I run into. I've got two Xbox ones and mm -hmm. I feel like eventually like the ideal for me like over the course of the next 10 years is to have an Xbox One X upstairs oh, and an wait. Xbox One okay. S downstairs in the ah. office for us to do run button with. And and the but, problem with that yeah. is that the the disc games will not be able to be played on my digital Xbox. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. what well, is the point? And so uh, this entire last week I've been like wishing that they had this uh, the Series S with a disk drive, but you're right. No one would buy the, <laughs> if it was no. like three hundred and fifty dollars, and it was the S with a disk drive. You're right. No one would buy the bigger one. No, and even again, the disk drives don't cost anything. Cost so anything. like, it wouldn't even have to cost three fifty. After um, like middleman prices and profit margins, you can go online right now and buy a disk drive for ten dollars. So, um. So the thing I hadn't been considering was I was thinking to myself, I don't buy, I don't buy new games on disc really. So I don't need the one with the disc drive, but I forgot that I really like that there are many Xbox and Xbox 360 games discs that I can put into my Xbox one and it will play the game. And now without a disc drive on my series S, it won't do that. And that's actually a big downer for me, but not for anyone else. I like yeah right but so like but i said we, i mean i i think i think the price point i think the series s is huge i think that is a big thing i think it'll do very well for them okay that's interesting though because i mean and i think you're right that 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 this um this argument becomes less compelling the further away you get from being like a long-standing video game hobbyist yeah uh like someone who had three games for their xbox 360 is not going to feel the same way yeah no they don't give a shit they already traded those games in to get you know but the but two games for their xbox one as like a growing hobby and as video games have become like a bigger thing is there i mean i think there's more more people now than ever who who want backwards compatibility like a thing that the ps the ps2 did um because the ps1 was so gigantic and was kind of the only game in town for so long uh disc wise um 
and and for a while it sort of seemed like they were they were doing backwards compatibility for a shrinking audience of people who have those disc yeah. games but i think maybe now more than ever there's people who do have disc games and do want to play them yeah i i think it's really i i really think the backwards compatibility thing is something of a black box that no one can really figure out because some people really want it some people don't give a fucking shit even a little bit you know, and we always hear that, you know, n- backwards compatibility is like the number one most desired and number one least used feature of every console and these kinds of things. But yeah, I don't I don't really know what to make of it. I do I can know tell that- you that I've barely put an old disc in my Xbox one <sighs> and I have tons of Xbox games. Yeah, like I'm, I'm thinking, I I have put a number of uh, older disc games in my Xbox One, um, but also those it's not universal compatibility. You can't put any Xbox or Xbox 360 game in an Xbox One. It's yeah. only ones that have been relicensed to work on Xbox One. And in that case, I'm pretty sure basically all of those games are also just available digitally on Xbox One and not for very much money most of the time. So maybe it's not a real issue either way. Huh. Who knows? Um, Who knows? But uh, I think I think the, the, there, the whole reason there's no disk drive in the Series S is to get them to pay more. Because I, I agree. I bet you, I bet you they're like, getting i bet they're like barely breaking even on the series x or maybe making some profit and then it, it, the series s is probably a loss leader so what they want is like to get you in the store f- with the 300 hundred dollar price tag and then the secret about purchases like these is a lot of people you know will be put off by a 400 hundred dollar price tag will be enticed by 300 hundred dollar price tag but once they're in the store and the salesperson is like you're not going to be able to play any xbox one or 360 game discs on this then the person goes ah what's a hundred dollars to be able to play my old games ah fine give me the series x despite like, I think, you know already having a ps3 and 4 at home probably uh Sure. You mean if they were getting a PS5? Well, if they're getting, yeah, they're getting a PS5. I'm saying if they're looking at an Xbox, if they're looking at an Xbox Series S, um, and they're compelled by the backwards compatibility argument, that means that they must have PS3 and 4 games at home. Hmm. Well, the uh, the five won't play three games. Okay. Well, four PS4 games. Yeah. Um, uh, well, that was uh, I. Like I said, I haven't been following. I've does it play PS4 games? I know that was the rumor. I don't know if it was ever confirmed. Uh, I don't know. I think it's stupid, so I didn't read up on it. It, you know, I. So I, I don't totally hate the look of the PS5. Like I think I do kind of like wild console designs in theory. Yeah, but. One is it's so crazy and lopsided that you need to put it on a stand because the bottom of it isn't flat, which is nuts. And oh, I, I thought already, the bottom of it was flat. I don't think so. Well, the uh, other thing is it's so big I cannot practically put it in my entertainment console. Yeah, that's the thing. I already went through this with my I have a fat original style uh, PS3. That's like big and fat, and its and its predominant feature is that the top is rounded, so you yeah. can't stack anything on it. It's yeah, a that's fucking the thing. nightmare. One of the things that makes my giant stupid Xbox One workable is that I keep my Dreamcast on top of it, on the side that doesn't have a fan. <laughs> nice. And so yeah. I have two consoles in that space. Um, but yeah, the yeah, curved it, top thing is just really bad. I think. Yeah, that that's the thing. When I look at the PS Five. I, I really shouldn't say that I find the design like off putting on its own merits, but I, I just know from experience that it's going to be one of those things where it looks really cool for two weeks and then for the next eight years, it's a huge pain in my ass the way it's shaped. You know, yeah. whereas I, I can don't tell think it looks ex- cool. <laughs> but- yeah, it, it also barely looks cool. <laughs> I don't know. I think the controllers look much much nicer than the system. I agree. I think the controllers look good. I'm excited to try them. Every PlayStation has better control. Well, for the last few, the, the each controller has been better than the last. I like the yeah the new. What are they? The DualShock threes? What are the, the PS4 <laughs> have? 
What? Oh, what does the PS4 have? Yeah. Uh, four. The number four? has always matched the system. Oh, really? I thought it was one off. That's why. I don't know why I thought that. No. It, well, it was because the three originally came out with the six axis that had no rumble, and they had to bring out the DualShock 3 later. Got it. Because it, Okay. All right. So the, the DualShock 4s, I think, are much better improved over the DualShock 3s yes. and 6 axis which are slightly improved over the previous um DualShocks. And I this think they're one actually worse. Really? Yeah, I think the DualShock 3. I mean, the DualShock 3 is better by being wireless, but the um the L2 and R2 things where they tried to make them triggers are actually garbage and no games use them as triggers because they're unusable. And the analog sticks are taller and looser, which some people prefer, but I do not. Um, that's fair. I, I guess I haven't had a DualShock 2 in quite a long time, but, yeah. uh, but my impression was that I thought it was, a, it was almost the same, maybe slightly it's, better. It's basically the same. Um, I, but I do like the DualShock 4s quite a bit more than any previous Sony controller. Mm. I still don't prefer it, um, but this new one looks like the best one yet. In, in terms of comfort so we'll see it just it just never been a controller that fits my hand and the shape has been hmm. slowly changing to look more like an xbox controller <laughs> yeah um which means i it's slowly been changing for me to like it more um the xbox yeah, controller I, looks I, almost the same the d-pad looks sick hmm i i might not have it's the, the i mean i've heard that the d-pad is like the xbox elite controller d-pad like a, it's like a weird dish like an octagonal yeah dish it's like a somehow. weird dish um i'm fine with that i don't really care uh yeah my my thing has always been i prefer the xbox controller for 3d games and i like the dual shock better for 2d games that's slightly changed now the the dual shock 4 i think you're right is better and so it's kind of good for both yeah i honestly like i love the xbox one controller but i would kind of give the edge to the dual shock 4 just because I don't have a problem playing 3D games on it like I used to with the DualShock 3, but I also think it's much better for 2D games still over the Xbox controller. So, eh. just because it has the D-pad in a more accessible position? Yeah, I just I like I've always liked the D-pad better and yeah. I think the position of it is bit nicer. Um, you know, I don't like that the buttons are disconnected. The Xbox has always had a connected D-pad, and I think that that makes yeah. 2D games easier for me. But you're right. The reason that I like the Xbox controller is that it that I like having my thumb up as opposed to to the side when I'm mm -hmm. playing games, which is yeah. why I like the Xbox One so much more. Part of it, at least. Uh, but by that logic, in with a with a 2D game, I would want I like having the D-pad in that upper space. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, uh, that totally makes I, sense. I know a lot of people say uh, for the DualShock, they prefer having the analog sticks be even with each other. And I would say for me, that was always something that sounded right in my head. But in practice, I've never actually cared about having like like uh, when you remember Fight Night Round 3, where like yeah. each analog stick was one fist. It was a boxing game. Yeah. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. I thought like, oh, you definitely want them on a dual shock where they're the same because that would make more sense but functionally it was never a problem to play it with like yeah it's not a problem analog sticks. It, it you're you just i mean people just are able to figure out how to control things like it's one of the it's one of the it's why we can play video games is because we can learn how to play it's things it's one of the most marvel marvelous things about humankind, Keith. Wow, we can play video games, but I'm like, <laughs> but like, not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying, like, if you use the Xbox controller, you'll learn how to use it. It's not a worse tool yeah. because they're not parallel. You just learn to play games where it's not parallel. Um, yep. Like, it makes a lot of sense if you played a bunch of playstation and then switched to the xbox and you're like this is worse and it's like yeah because you didn't learn how to use it um yeah but um anyway um, i like but... the shape of the of the ps5 controller but i don't like the lines on it. i don't like the bowl i don't like the the curves and like the big line like it looks like um well, the meme, the meme You're of it was the, the controller. Yeah, the controller. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they have it has the same sort of thing going on with the curves and the lines and the white. 
uh, the meme of it was that the controller looked like the um, the the Eve robot from Wally. That was the meme. Oh, okay. Um, or like, I guess. Uh, but but for me, it like, I'm looking at it. I like it. It, it looks like just... a it looks like a Toyota Corolla. It looks like a like everything is <laughs> like it doesn't have it doesn't have any angles on it. Like the whole thing is is like like just a big like a bubble. Okay, like everything is a so bubble. I'm... I'm looking at a I'm looking at a side by side of a DualShock Four and Five. Yeah. Um, it is. It's a little bit bigger actually, though the handles don't look bigger, which is good because the handles on that thing did not need to be bigger. Yeah. Um, the buttons. It it kind of it honestly just looks like. I bet if you held it, you'd be like, oh, this is just like a DualShock Four. Like most of the co- it it almost seems like most of these changes might be more cosmetic than you realize until you hold no, it because it, it looks I'm pretty saying, similar. I agree with that. Uh, I think that the way that they have chose to stylize it with the with the white contrasting with the black has accentuated the very weird bulbous look it has. But hmm. I do think, I, I don't have the side-by-side thing that you're looking at, but it looks like the, the handles are angled more downward and they're more rounded inward. I'll uh I'll give you a link here. Okay. Yeah, I would um I do like it it seems like it has the same thing. It has the light on the back, I think, the same way the DualShock 4 did, but now the light like seeps through the lines on the front of the controller, yeah. which I think is really nice. Well, that line always bugged the shit out of me when I was playing <laughs> video games at night. Yeah, I I don't well, I did. Tur- I uh, once they like very quickly patched in the ability to turn the brightness of the thing down. I turned it down to dim, and it was never really a problem again. Yeah. Um, okay. Everything's everything's more spaced out. The middle section is much wider because you can see the analog sticks used to protrude at the bottom for the for the DualShock uh, Four, but on this one they're like fully inside the 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 cavity of the well, thing. That's true, but that's what I mean when I'm talking about cosmetic differences because that bottom part of the controller you're describing is not a part you ever touch with your hands. So it looks bigger, but it's not really because they've only added plastic a place where you never touch anyways. Right. I I guess I'm not talking about it as a functional controller. I'm only talking about the design. Oh, okay. Well, I think it looks nicer than the... I think it looks much nicer than the PS4 one. I think the PS4 one looks weird and bulbous. I think that they've taken a shape that could be really nice and made it annoying looking to me. Like, Hmm. you can see the the DualShock 4 has a straight line on top. This has a curved line. The, The DualShock has, like, a much more straight down, like, the sides on the handles, like, where it's a much... Like, it was sort of like a gentle curve. And... Like there's the 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 fa the dual shot the new dual shock just has like gentle curves everywhere where the 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 like last one was curve. like a straight line. Keith, well, let that then, controller caress you. What's then they've wrong, added, baby? They've added the white, which accentuates the the like the sort of bubbly, um, Toyota Corolla nature of it, um. I don't know. I I, That's, I, 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 I think you know, that it looks like a really functional controller that I will have a lot more fun using than a DualShock 4, but I think it looks annoying in the same way I think that the PS5 looks you annoying. Know, I, I just wish, I, I just hope one day we figure out how to have a discussion about, you know, game consoles and game controllers without you saying something inflammatory like the DualShock 5 looks like a Toyota Corolla. It's just uncalled <laughs> for and it's it's fucked up and I'm or frankly like, sick uh, of it. It kind of looks like a Nissan Altima. Come on, Keith. No, that's like, actually, I like... I mean, Nissan Altima is not nearly as bad as the Toyota Corolla. Like, well, there's, there me, was just, like, so explosion funny to me of, cause, like, of no no angles on car on sedans for a long mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Uh, and I just hate that. I much prefer yeah, an I extremely agree. weird early 90s Toyota than a <laughs> 2014 uh, Corolla. It, it's just funny to me. Like, I, I... So, I drive a Camry, a 2018 Camry, and I, I think I had a 2015 before that. And it was... um. It's just funny because, like, when I went to the dealership, it struck me that, like, the Toyota Corolla seems designed top to bottom to uh, push you towards buying a Camry. Like, <laughs> like, I think the guy the guy pointed at a Corolla and went, like, here's a Corolla, but, like, you don't want that. And I was kind of like, in my head, I was like, 
I know what you're doing, but you're right. I don't want that. <laughs> Nobody wants a Corolla. Uh, my mother dro drove a Corolla for a little while. Um, well, the thing about the Camry is that the Camry used to have its own look, and it was it was slimmer. Uh, it was more it angular. Does now. What's that? It does now. It, you're but but there is a while where so the Corolla was you know became a much more rounded car and then the mm. Camry along with every other sedan in the world started becoming that same sort of rounded look and yes. I think that the Camry has once again become its own thing but for a while it was very hard to tell the difference between a Camry <laughs> and a Corolla and yeah, not the, in a good way yeah, you're right it, it is because I know my my our well our grandparents drove a Camry like a like a 2010 Camry or something and that one you're right was much more rounded and the one that I have is sort of like it's like wider but lower and has yeah like less rounded angles on it and stuff um but that's car talk get yourself a get yourself a 95 Camry and we'll talk that shit is the bomb no you have to get yourself a 1990 Zazz 1102 what is that uh, it was just like somebody tweeted. I think it was like the Soviet visuals uh, Twitter account or something. It was like a Russian magazine ad for this car. And it had like a car model on it. But it was just kind of funny because like the car model was like covered head to toe and had like a beret on or something. And it was just like an extremely boxy, weird looking 90s sedan. But I was just like, this is the first time a car model's ever worked on me. I'll buy one of these now. <laughs> Get me a Zazz 11, a 1990 Zazz 1102. Oh, so that's a Corolla. That's that, a, oh, that's a Camry. That's a 95 Camry. Come on. Let's get that cars looks, back no. to the 90s. No, nope. I don't want that. You uh, don't want that? You would prefer You would honestly, prefer this? No. You'd prefer no, for, this? This okay. is a 2015 Camry. 2015 Camry. Uh, I, honestly, yes. I mean, but see, this is this is a matter of perspective because when I look at a 1995 Camry, I really don't see, like, I'm not seeing the car, like, the car doesn't exist in my mind as a brand new car. It exists in my mind as, like, like, every time I've seen a 1995 Camry in the last 20 years, it's been a really old car. Right. And so, like, I have it in my head of, like, oh, that's one of those shitty cars. Whereas, like, now the extremely boxy, weird-looking ones from the 80s that were in my mind as what a shitty car looked like back then now is kind of appealing to me because now like the 90s cars are the really shitty cars in my head yeah or even well, really early 2000s here's, cars a, here's a late 80s camry this is like on the border it's somewhere in between the 95 that i showed you in the late 80s where this is this is like we need to hybridize these two aesthetics <laughs> and start making new cars that look like this smaller smaller cars with nice angles instead of smaller dr everyone cars, driving please. circles please Ugh. smaller cars they don't need such a tall suv why 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 because you oh uh sorry that once a week you've got to carry your kids soccer uniforms you need a you need a 14 foot long trunk to do it in <laughs> Fuck you. Um, a station wagon, I think, was a 14-foot-long trunk. <laughs> um, but they were short and light. So, um, yeah, bring back the station wagon, honestly. I don't know. Eh. I don't love the station wagon. I can get behind a, a, a good hatchback, but... Okay. Well, I mean, what if it was a hatchback station wagon? I mean, come on. I mean, uh, like a hatchback sedan. The sedan is the ultimate kind of car. Every other kind of car, every other kind of car should be a special use kind of car because all, literally all you need is, is a sedan. Although, you know what I like? I like those early 90s, like or early to late 90s pickup truck or, it, you know, it, hap it existed earlier than this, but this is when it started to change for the worse. But the last era of like small pickup trucks. 
Okay, Where sure, like, yeah, because yeah, because like now you can't get you can't get a small pickup truck because then all your bros are gonna laugh at you. Well, they just don't make them. They don't even make a small pickup truck well, anymore that, because that's why. Because right, because they make all your bros who make fun of you if you're not it's, driving a bus <laughs> engine inside of what, inside. <laughs> well, inside I of was a car. I was going through. Uh, I went to the dentist. I was I was going through the parking garage. And uh, there was just one pickup truck that was like like a full third of the length of the vehicle was sticking out into like the the lane that you drive through out of the yeah. thing. And I looked at it and it was like a New Hampshire license plate. And I was like, yeah, checks out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There's like this entire class of like rich suburban douchebag who gets a gigantic pickup truck and has Ugh. never put anything in it ever. You've heard, you know that Jim Gaffigan bit, right? No. He said, uh, "Like a lot of people driving a pickup truck nowadays, it's like uh, it's like if you were walking around with an empty suitcase, and someone went like, oh, suitcase, huh? You going on a trip? No, but I'm the kind of guy that would.' <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, um, I am yeah, let's get back to let's get back to small pickup trucks. Everybody oh, get oh, a Subaru oh, okay. Baja. Who got really? I thought you were about to say, "Let's get back to talking about video games," and I had a moment of panic because I was like, "I'm not done talking about trucks." You ever um, seen Subaru Baja? Um, I must have. Yeah, I think so. It's one of the funniest cars of all time. It's a dream oh, of really? mine to okay. own a Subaru Baja. Oh, okay. Wow, I have to look. Okay. Here, I, um, I, I just linked you a picture. I, I'm on Google faster. Okay. Subaru um, Baja. You got to get a yellow one. It's a Subaru uh, station wagon. But it's a pickup truck instead yes, of has a truck. Yes, yes, I know these. It's a, it is an unbelievably silly kind of car, and I love it. It, <laughs> it is, but like, here's the thing. Subaru Bajas are so weird and yet apparently functional that like when you drive one, it's almost like a flex where you like you see somebody and you're like that person's living their best life. They know yeah. exactly yeah. what they wanted, and yeah. what they wanted was a Subaru Baja. And here's and that's I mean. It has been my goal to drive those kinds of cars in my life. Um, um, so I actually recently saw, like, I am so not an SUV person at all. I, I kind of them. despise them. Um, though, as having had kids, I do recognize their, you know, they're like the, I, I do like the move of their limited utility. Yeah, I like the I like the move of we don't make minivans anymore. We just make minivans that look less stupid and they're shaped like SUVs and like, yeah, fine. You need a minivan for kids, whatever. But they um, actually aren't they aren't minivans cuz they don't have they don't have as many seats. They only have 5 seats. Uh, that's or a minivan true. has has uh, 7 seats. It, well, I mean, if you've got one of the crazy ones, yeah. What? No, they all do. All minivans. That's like the thing of a minivan. No, two front seats, no, no, no. two middle seats, three back seats. No. That's like the whole thing. No, I, th- I well, I, I, maybe. I could be wrong. I'm like well, I, pretty I positive that this they, is the selling I mean, point I think there's there's all shapes and sizes of minivans and SUVs at this point. But uh, so I was, um, this was back when I was um, looking into, when I was getting into RC cars and uh, I was looking on a website and they had one RC car that was like a scale model of like a 1985 Ford Bronco. And it was like a uh, turquoise and it had like the chrome metal grill and everything with like these hard angles. And I was just like, fucking look at that thing. It's so sick. You got you to gotta link me to it. Um, I just Google 1985 Ford Bronco. Um, oh, I know what a Bronco looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I- and it's got those big big ass tires and shit and, yeah. and i had just they stopped at- making the bronco because the famous bronco yes. owner was a bad guy <laughs> yes yes i know <laughs> the because of the uh, the the oj simpson police chase in which he was driving a ford bronco they killed the bronco yeah well the yeah the bronco is cool it's undeniable that the bronco is a sick car um, um and and uh specifically there was uh there's a an rc track near in providence that i went to once like before i came to your house or something and uh and they had inside they had a rock crawler course that was basically like for small cars but it was you know it it was simulating like a like a mountainside or something and like had like Mm -hmm. rickety wooden bridges and shit and i was like oh man i gotta get this this scale bronco and take it up the rock crawler course I still want to do that. Okay, not to not to prove you wrong. I just okay. wanted to make sure. 
minivan is an American car classification for vehicles designed to pa- transport passengers in uh, the rear seating rows with reconfigurable seats in two or three rows. Two or three rows. Configurable what- seats in two or three rows. In the yeah. rear. Two or three rows in the rear. So that would be a total of three or four rows, right? Hmm. I don't know. Um, Because you can't have two rows of reconfigurable seats, including the front seats. You should not be allowed to reconfigure your front seats because you have to sit there to drive. Before we move on, I just want to find you that picture of the Zaz 1102. You should see Zaz Z A Z. I have it right here. Okay. Yes, this was from the Soviet Visuals Twitter account. Oh yeah, I those are like, sick. Look if at you, that thing. If, if you look at if you look at um if you look at Soviet cars from that era, they all look like this and they all are great. <laughs> um Rad. there's like a there's like a Yugoslavian um car that looks very much like this. Let me see. The it was kind of famous. The Yugo it's an extreme. It was like a four thousand dollar car. It was yes, like a total I've, shit bucket. I've seen this. How was it spelled? Y U G O. You go. Okay. Did a you go car? People hated them. I loved them. Although I don't know that people. Maybe people hated them because Americans are propagandized to hate inexpensive cars because they have to be bad. I I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Um, yeah yeah of course of course this thing yeah this thing rules we all know this thing gotta get those hard lines those hard to find lines yeah i i mean i think it's coming back because it is it's been coming back for a couple years but it's so slow (laughs) yeah i've been really i mean i've been fed up since the since before i knew the word aesthetics i've been fed up with everything (laughs) being round um i was a little bit later to that feeling but like yeah i can i can just tell hard lines are coming back because i used to look at these cars from the 80s and thought they looked very stupid and now i think they look cool do you remember my next bit robin that was a couple years ahead of uh ahead of the times i think oh is that your blade runner car no no that was my phone that was my old phone oh god do you remember the 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 like mint and white colored phone with the like (laughs) front facing speakers no really uh, if you want to talk about uh bad, bad cars from the like early two thousands, remember early two thousands Mustangs? Like oh just how yeah, they're everywhere. Stupid. They well they were for a long time, but well I like, think they're still everywhere because people think they're cool and they buy them used. Well, no, I I'm talking about the ones that didn't have round headlights. Like the um, round headlight ones, like once my, they started putting phone. round headlights in them again and made them like like lower profile, I thought they looked cool again. But the ones from 2002 basically just look like a Camry that somebody put a Mustang logo on the front of, and it's just like so lame. Even though we thought they were cool at the time. Oh I, yeah, no, these are these are lame. Yeah, yeah, these are lame. I never got into car. I mean, I'm into cars tangentially from that I like when something is cool, like designed cool but i never have been into like cars no i think i stuff i think i kind of am now mostly because i don't know i think i i think i got old enough to just i think i learned how i think i learned what is fun about hobbies now and so instead of like looking down on everyone's weird hobbies i just instead go like there's probably something cool about that yeah cars are kind of down on cars i just never got into them I used to kind of look down on car people a little bit. Okay. I just didn't see the point of it, but now I kind of get it. Well, there's an over there's I think there's also there's an overlap between car people and assholes sometimes. Car people no. are assholes. There couldn't be. What? Yeah. I um, never. Hmm. Yeah. Uh well, if you say so, I don't know. You know, people's hot. I used to watch a lot I used to watch a lot of I used to watch a lot of Top Gear, and they all seemed like fine gentlemen. 
Well, people's hobbies are 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 so tied up in consumerism that it's it's for it's hard to separate them both yeah. like mentally but also like literally. Uh, like it's hard to do your hobby without buying something. Um, no matter what your hobby is. And like the car people are the ultimate like their hobby is the most expensive possible product. Pretty much. Like nothing yeah. is more expensive than cars that you can just like buy that someone would just go right. to a store and buy. Like the car store sells the <laughs> most expensive things in any other kind of store. Well, I, I more when I think of a car person, I'm thinking more of like a person that is into like customizing their car with yeah, like sure. parts with they you know buying. hundreds and that of or, or yeah. thousands of dollars in parts. Uh-huh. Yep. Um Video games. Oh, video games. I've been playing some video games. What have you been playing? I Well, I just finished up a fresh three-heart playthrough of Ocarina of Time. Wow, that's interesting. What is Ocarina of Time? Oh, that's a classic action-adventure video game for the Nintendo 64. And do you recommend it? Yeah, it's really, really good. Tell me something about it. I I just recently for the first time played through it. I did a three heart run, which means I didn't expand. I didn't add any hearts to my life oh, gauge three for the whole run. game. I kind of like I heard you say that, but it didn't register to me that that would, is significant. Yeah. How was that hard? I bet. Uh, uh, I mean, you know what, Keith? Not Don't mean bad. to brag, but I just I'm such a fucking stone cold killer at Ocarina of Time. <laughs> it wasn't really any big deal. Good for you. Yeah, so that's the whole story. I played so through three Majora's Hearts Mask and uh, now. it was fine. Um, you're going to do a three-star no. Majora's Mask run? No, I'm good. Yeah? How come? Uh, because Ocarina of Time is the only one that I like enough uh, to do that with, probably. And, like, Majora's Mask is weird and hard. Mm. Also, like, I know Ocarina like the back of my hand, sort of. Or at least I should say I thought I knew Ocarina of Time like the back of my hand until I met my roommate Cheryl, who really does, and that's pretty wild. Um, so I was, ba- I basically had like a Game Facts guide, a living Game Facts guide next to me on the couch that I could just ask for help whenever I needed. Um, so that was cool. So actually <laughs> the reason I played Ocarina was because they were a big Ocarina fan, but had never played Master Quest. So they started doing that on my copy of Master Quest and then watching them play it made me want to play it. So then mm. I set up a second TV in the living room <laughs> and to put an N64 next to the GameCube. Oh my God. And so we were both playing Ocarina of Time all week. Well, that's fun. Yeah. I, I haven't played Ocarina of Time since it came out for the 3DS. Mm, uh, although yeah. I did enjoy it more then than I ever have. I enjoyed it on the 3DS less than I ever have. Really? Weird, Why is huh? that? I think it was just one of those. Uh, well, for one, I've played Ocarina so much that it's like the diminishing returns thing where I kind of enjoy it a little bit less each time. So I try to like take bigger breaks in between my playing of it now. Um, mm. And I think I think it was just that. You know, I, I I'm not a remake person. I just you know remakes sound nice until I it try them really and I just kind of go. Well, I just I mean a, it was a graphical update, but of course like then that just means like it didn't was really it? Lo- it yeah it was a, yeah they updated like all the textures and like okay. the character models right. and so it was one of those things where it was like this doesn't look good enough to be amazing but it looks different from the thing that i have all the fond childhood memories of so it's kind of like this wishy-washy middle ground that doesn't do much for me so yeah for me it was more like i i didn't it didn't really click with me as a kid and it just wasn't the sort of thing that I was interested in, like, digging out an, or- an original copy for. And so being able to have it in my 3DS made it just so much more convenient. Mm-hmm. Plus all of the convenient UI things that they added to the second screen made it, like, much more, like, an easy thing to pick up and do. Like, I don't think I would have liked it as much if the only way I could play it was to, like, go to my TV and use an n64 controller Mm -hmm. um uh yeah yeah actually the weird thing for me is i i i used to play ocarina at friends houses because i used to not have it which looking back on it it was like that game was so sick why did i not pester my parents until they bought me ocarina i'll never understand but uh 
I didn't own it until GameCube. So to me, like the Ocarina controller is the GameCube controller. And so playing it on the N64 is a little bit weird now. Um, but I have something to mention about Ocarina of Time that is wild. What's that? Um, so there's so a lot of people have heard about how there in the Fire Temple, the music had like this faint thing in the back that you could barely make out, but it had, and I think it was just part of the sound library of the N64 for some reason, but it was like these um, like Islam, they were like chants from the Quran or something, like some kind of Islamic chanting. I don't know what language it was in. I don't even know if I've even heard it. I can't really remember. Um, but so they changed that um, and they changed the Gerudo symbol, the 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 place where Ganondorf comes from. That is like a race of thieves. <laughs> uh, and the symbol is all over the game because it's on like every block that you push around and stuff, because I guess it's supposed to be like, oh, Ganondorf's influence is encroaching or something. Um, do you? And oh, by the way, Ganondorf comes from the desert. Do you know what the old Gerudo logo used to be? On a scale of one to ten, how bad is it? Eleven. Is it a swastika? Okay, no. You said eleven. <laughs> That's well, not on okay. me. You said eleven. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. It's so. Here's the thing. It's not the symbols. Not bad. It's the fact that they are using it for an evil person from the desert that makes it really bad. It's like I. I'm sorry. I don't know what the symbol is called, but it's just the Islam moon symbol. But like oh, the wow. little, yeah, but the really little bad. star, the little star. They changed it to like yeah. s like a little X or something. And so it's just like all over this game is is this symbol and the craziest part is that uh, so the 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 islamic chanting thing was changed the grudo symbol was changed and the other thing that they changed was like the final boss spits out blood when you kill him and they changed the blood from red to green um but what is wild to me was that I turned on this N64 copy and I went to the first dungeon to see if it had the original symbol and it did. And so I was like, ooh, this is one of those unaltered copies of the game. I don't think I've heard. I, I certainly haven't played through the Fire Temple with the original music, so that would be interesting. So I played through the whole thing and it turns out that I have um, this very interesting middle copy where the music in the Fire Temple was changed and the red blood was changed to green, but it still has the fucking moon all over the game. Like wow. the idea that you censored this game and and nobody, like how did people find this, this Islamic chant thing in the music to be upset about and didn't notice this other symbol thing? It's so crazy to me. That's really weird. I didn't Wild. know about any of this, so this is all news to me. Where did you hear about this? Uh, I mean, I just knew of it, I guess. Oh, okay. I thought this was something that you learned recently about, about this, about the game. No. Um, I, th I think it, I knew, I had forgotten that the Gerudo symbol was changed, and I think I had definitely forgotten what it was changed from, so when I saw it, I was like, holy shit. Very bad. Yeah. Very you know, it bad. It makes Nintendo. sense that it wasn't oh a swastika. It, it makes sense that it wasn't a swastika, because if, if, uh, if a, if a media ca company in Japan was going to misuse the swastika, it would be by downplaying that the people that used it were evil, not <laughs> upplaying it. I know you've been watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, so. Oh, yeah. A show that God. I stopped watching Fuck. because it kept on, like, complimenting Nazis yeah. it, over and over. Holy shit. I've been enjoying the show, but yeah, I, I did also not need was these not Nazi really even apologetics. The show. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? Uh if you want to show that if you want to show that won't stop talking about the honorable patriotism of the Nazis, then I've got Ugh, a show for you. And it's called Christ. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the show that no one online will stop uh, complimenting for the last five years. I've never seen anybody say a negative word about that show, and I tried to watch it, and it was only... That's all that I remember from it. Okay, I... It's not... It's not only that. It's only a little bit of it, but I understand... I mean, it's... From what I've seen so far, it's only a little bit of it, but I understand why it would stick out in your head. What, what, or what 
like story what do they call I'm still them on, i'm still on part two okay well there, there's more in the next part so are you fucking kidding me nope isn't the next one in like 1960 uh yeah what the fuck yeah i'm like 90 yeah. percent sure there's more so in the like next part. yeah like part two takes place in like the late 30s and one of the like heroes i mean they they start out he starts out at odds with the protagonist of that part of the show but one of like the main characters that you're supposed to care the most about like like early he's italian and like early on he talks about like how how cool it is that like the italians and germans are like super great buds and i'm like what the fuck is going on right now yeah. and my memory and i if you get to it and i'm wrong i apologize people feel free i would it's very rare that i would say this feel free to correct me on this i'm pretty sure that the worst of it is in the next um, oh my god story yeah so th the thing for me is that all of the stuff in part two that isn't nazi apologetics i thought was really great i really like i well okay it's jojo has this weird thing where it is so wildly over the top about it's like shonen tropes that it's almost hard to like get emotionally invested in the plot because it's so silly. Yeah. But I really like, I, I love like the color palette, how it will just like throw these crazy pastels on the screen, like whenever it feels like just to make it more visually interesting. Very cool stuff. Yeah. I honestly like, uh, and I, I was, was expecting I mean, it. I, <laughs> I was expecting to like it more, and I, I was, I ended up being really underwhelmed by the time I. Oh, quit. that was weird. I thought I remembered you saying that you really liked it. So. I was really enjoying mm. it, and then I was like, the gotcha. Nazi thing is is outweighing that. I'm kind of enjoying mm. this. You know, I think my I my memory is that like the second half of the first story and the first half of the second story was probably when we were talking about it and when I was enjoying it most. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like the nazi stuff started and then didn't end when even though they changed time periods god yeah um, yeah I, I i i thought it was so when it showed back one. up the second time i was you were like, like okay i was like oh i cannot bl no i still yeah. stuck with it i stuck with it for another you know i can't remember how much of that season that i watched or maybe i even watched four maybe it skips three and it comes back in the fourth one i can't remember i like honestly don't remember how much of it i watched but i remember like i remember feeling like i was on board because this was getting better and better and the show has started getting worse and also like it was like oh it was a very weird time to be watching something that was complimenting nazis yeah because i, I believe that i was watching it like the week after the the Charleston protest and Heather Hare was killed by the Nazi, like yeah. I was watching it around that time, um, and so like I don't know, it's very it was it, it just like it strikes me as really weird that I've heard so much excellent shit about that show and yeah. that in that it was so complimentary to literal Nazis. I, and I had never heard that. It caught me really off guard and was really disappointing. <laughs> yeah. One of my roommates is like a big JoJo super fan, but she's literally 18. She's a child. Yeah. So like, you know, like she said to me, like, I've been obsessed with JoJo for like an entire year. Like as if that was supposed to be a long time. Like I almost laughed at her. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like, yeah, she's. You know, I I trust that when she gets older, she will look back on this and go like, "Whoa, maybe I shouldn't have recommended this so unabashedly to everyone I met." Or well, I don't you know, know because the people that were recommending it to me were certainly not know. eighteen. I don't know. It just know. feels like something that I would say if I were recommending JoJo to someone. Be like, by the I, there is some like weird Nazi shit in here. Yeah. Um, but but nope, never happened. Caught me completely yeah. off guard. Like it. It, yeah, like, like I am used to anime, some animes, like being way too thrilled about having like, um, like over the top Nazi caricatures as villains. I was not prepared for like Nazi redemption arcs in Jojo. Like that was yeah. like, <laughs> and by the way, the redemption is just like personal redemption for individual nazis not the nazi party as a whole 
Right, but but, uh, but also yeah. it wasn't anything so great that the Nazi did. It was just that JoJo is no. like, wow, this guy sure is honorable and patriotic. Yeah. Um, like that's yeah that would a lot of that was the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't yeah. like wow these Nazis look at all this unpatriotic shit they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I think for a long time that was that was always that was always like the, the the backhanded compliment that was given to Nazis like you can't doubt their dedication to their country it's like yeah I, ex- okay. I extremely doubt it <laughs> I am kind of doubting it um and uh I've I've also been watching K-On um which was one of those um shows that people were like always uh posting images of like on forums and stuff back in like the late 2000s but i just never understood what the fuck it was or what a k on was supposed to be or what was even happening yeah i don't know what this is uh it's just it's just one of those um it's it's one of it's it's this is my first step into the wide world of cute anime girls doing nothing um it, oh, it's just, you've talked about you talked about this i think no no because okay. uh, we haven't recorded since I started watching it, okay. but uh, it's just it's just a high school anime about four and then five girls in uh, what they call oh, the light then music. Five. Four and then five uh, girls in what they call the light music club, which I have taken to understand from the show is a very normal thing for a Japanese high school to have. I still have not really gotten a grasp on what light music is supposed to mean. I'm sure that could be cleared up with a quick Google search. Um, but it appears to be like, I guess what we would think of as like slightly pop influence, like the, like guitar pop, like, yeah, like guitar pop basically. So yeah, they like make a rock band and most of the episodes are just about them, uh, doing nothing and like, you know, like it's so their thing is like they meet in the music room after school every day, but they mostly just drink tea and eat cakes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it's just, it's cute and it's adorable and they're all very sweet and they're very good friends. And then sometimes they play totally sick music that I love. Um, and, and when they do the, the few times I've seen them do like a performance in the show, it's always like it cuts to, it, you know, it cuts to like, they, they perform on stage at like their school's talent show, but the show presents it as like a music video of them in a convertible being chased by the cops and then like playing at Woodstock or something. I don't know, but it's fun and it's, it's just a great time and it's been warming my heart. Tell me about the boys, the boys. The Boys is an Amazon uh, exclusive television show based on a comic book. And uh, there was one of those that I loved and it's gone. Oh, what is that? The Tick. Right. Yes, you did like that. Did you ever watch that? I watched one episode when I was in kind of a weird mood, but it gave me the same vibe that the Tick always does was that I couldn't. I didn't immediately understand what it was or what was happening, and it kind of unsettled me, but I don't know. You should try watching, like, four episodes. Okay. Um, so, The Boys is a show... So, it was recommended to me by a co-worker last year, um, but I didn't take the recommendation that seriously because they were, like, a big MCU fan and were kind mm. of... You know, like they were they were the smartest and most reasonable person at my job, I felt like, but like they still were always wearing like grunt style t shirts and shit. Um and wait, so they wait, I, wait, what is grunt style? It's just like it's like in a lifestyle brand for people that like guns or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's so funny. The thing that's so funny about it is that anybody, anybody who, anybody who would wear a lifestyle brand for people that like guns would get really mad at it being called a lifestyle brand. <laughs> like it would be very annoying to them. I bet. <laughs> well, that's what it is. Uh, their logo is like two flintlock rifles crossed. Very sick. Yeah, very sick. <laughs> uh, 
But anyway, so I think I think he might have. I, I I can't remember the conversation that we had. For whatever reason, my takeaway was about it was that the show was about like a group of guys who develop superpowers and then it's supposed to be kind of like a semi-comedy about like look at these dude bros with their magic powers and that didn't sound very appealing to me so I didn't look at it um but it kept getting pushed in my face by my Amazon Fire and eventually I broke down and watched it and it's like really fucking good it's really, really good actually I watched the whole first season in one sitting um it's so it's actually about it's, can i it's, give you my impression as someone who's not seen it but has looked into potentially watching it because i okay. thought it maybe was going to be interesting but decided that i didn't want to watch it i also i've seen trailers and i read mm -hmm. a little bit of like a what oh, is the boys yeah real quick like the other thing i saw was um I saw the season two trailer, or at least part of it, and the first thing they show you in that trailer is like some new woman superhero showing up and being an asshole, and everyone's like, who the fuck is this bitch? And I was like, is this the show, like the first, oh, season one was good times with the boys, and now season two, a girl's here, and we're all mad about it. It seemed uh, <laughs> to me like a show about like, what would happen if actually people got superpowers and the answer to the question is, well, they'd be fucking assholes about it. Uh, basically, yeah. It, it's it's like um, it's yeah. It's yet another one of those "what if superheroes was real" stories. Uh, but it but it's all angled towards like late capitalism. So it's like they like that world still has their equivalent of like nonstop Marvel movies. They're just all based on real superheroes and like all the superheroes are contracted to this. Uh, well, I think to different corporations, but there's one like huge mega one called Vought um, that, you know, co like will contract out their heroes to different cities. And they have they, like their version of the Justice League is called the seven. And that's like the seven biggest uh, best superheroes that they have um, that are like their, you know, their big celebrity meal ticket people and um and and they're all like of course they're all basically just like existing superhero analogs so there is homelander who is superman there's queen mave who's wonder woman there is the deep who is aquaman etc um and i guess i it took me a few episodes to figure out who the titular boys were supposed to be but i get it's like a it's a group of non soups uh, who I guess like want to get revenge on slash take down Vought and the seven because because they're because they go around basically like just causing all kinds of collateral damage. Basically, yeah. like the the onset of the story is like the main character is standing on the edge of a street having a sweet heart to heart with his girlfriend, and then his girlfriend explodes into a cloud of blood because they're a, this show's equivalent of the Flash. A train has just run through her. Uh, and then just goes, I'm sorry, it was an accident. I can't stop. And then just like takes off again. And then like that guy gets offered like $40,000 to sign an NDA to like never talk about it. Um, uh, and there's this other character, um, superhero called Starlight, who is like a new inductee into the seven. And she's like young and very um, idealistic and wants to do great things and be a great hero and be a great role model. And then of course, comes to find that none of those things are what Vought is interested in having her do. Um, and uh, the story kind of goes off from there. It, you know, it has some comedy in there. There's definitely some stuff in there that's not awesome. Uh, early on, there's a lot of fridging of women. Like, it keeps killing women to make men sad, and that sucks. Yeah. But the non-dead the, um, the non women, I mostly, I all like. So, you know, even when they're not likable. Like, I like how unlikable they are. Um, it's, it's well acted, well written, well directed. Um, and, and, but really to me, the biggest sin that it commits is, um, it's the same thing that we talked about with like the Spider-Man game and it, it's all superhero media, which is just that despite it all, it keeps depicting the world as a place that fundamentally is full of crime and terrorism. Like this is accepted as a basic fundamental fact of human life. And it's just a question of, is it moral to have superheroes exist and be the ones taking care of this problem? You know, and, yeah. the, and the show's clear answer to that is, is no, 
but it's still like yeah there's just like a, a definitely a few it's times still, where they it's, just like talk about terror you know it's that thing we always talk about it's like they talk about terrorist as if it is like a like something you could identify as like someone would be like yes hello i'm a terrorist and not yeah. like a label yeah, or that's just put happens, on someone else like you'll always just have x amount of people that will just be terrorists yeah they just for love no causing reason. terror there's yeah. just bad people out there and they want to yeah. do terror there's no reason why terrorists exist. They're, they just do. They just do. And so we need, we either need the superheroes or the military to take care right. of it. One, of, so one the, of the two. The, the question that they, that these sorts of, that the, these sorts of pieces of media end up asking is like, do we really need to have superhero? Like, like, is this amount of power ethical? But then the answer that they keep presenting, like they're saying like, no, like the superheroes are bad or like whatever the analogy is for superheroes, like that amount of power is too much. But then they are also saying like, but the world is full of crime and without them, people will right. die. Yeah. Like um, when that's know, like, not true about the real world. Yeah. Like what I, what I love about the show is how unequivocally it shows all of these people as mostly being monsters or at least people that are so morally compromised that it, you yeah. know, they're, you know like irredeemable or whatever but like it it seems not able or at least not willing to make that jump to like oh cops and the military are just the real world version of superheroes they have like all of this power and are largely unaccountable and can do whatever they want to whoever they want and we basically can't stop them um so this was written i had to look it up i didn't know this the guy that 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 wrote the comic book his name is garth ennis um this part this next part i knew he's um oh no it's no, bad what's that is it gonna be no, really I, bad n no i mean i don't know if there is something bad about this guy but no <laughs> he he I, i'm just like adding to your point about the the things that you said you didn't like about the show which is that it's like constantly fridging uh women mm -hmm. um he he wrote a, a kind of a called the preacher which i also have not read um but one of the things that I know about the preacher is uh, sort of typified by this line here from the bull from like press from the boys. And this has said that the boys would quote out preacher preacher, presumably Ooh. referring to the extreme violence and sexuality that were the series hallmark. And it seems like ah. like both the preacher and the boys, as at least as far as the comic book go, are like very like violence, bro. Uh, and right. Like, yeah uh, like extreme dark like look at this extremely cool dark shit and isn't the world bad and full yeah. bad yeah like i yeah so i i do know a fair amount of like the world of comic books so even having not read the comic i'm like watching the show and going like mm, i can tell this was toned down and like every time something happens that's like Oh, like really over the top for the show i'm like ah that was a moment they couldn't write out of the like the comic adaptation like or something like it there yeah it, it definitely especially early like all the fridging seemed to happen in the first half of the first season and i think all of the worst like over sexual stuff was that too like yeah, it, it it felt a little yeah. bit scattershot. Like, I would love it 90% of the time, and then there would just be one scene where I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's part, uh, of, part yeah. of what convinced me not to watch the show was, um, like, when I was looking into what is The Boys and finding this and being like, there's going to be stuff that I won't like in the show, and that is the stuff that the guy who created The Boys really did like. Yeah. Um. But I, I hearing you talk about it though, I'd be very interested in you to go back and watch the tick because the tick is like a satire on, like, uh, on superheroes and also a play on like what would happen if superheroes were real. Right. That I think okay. is like is like really compelling. Um, and doesn't doesn't fall into the thing. Like I've seen before, the thing of like what would happen if superheroes were real? Well, they'd be jerks and it would be a big problem. Um, and I think that the tick does a really good job of showing that in a, in a, in a new way. Um, especially, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I liked season two better than season one, but there's a big shift in terms of like what they're showing you where like season one is about the tick and season two is about superhero or season one is about being a superhero and season two is about like 
superheroes, like superhero organizations in the mm-hmm. same sort of way that you're talking about with this one yeah. in The Boys. Uh, and I, I'd be interested to hear what you thought about the differences between these two shows. Sure. Uh, the Tick is very good if anybody hasn't seen mm-hmm. it. I highly recommend it. It got canceled after season two. It's a tragedy. Uh, one of the better, one of the best, and one of the five best shows in the last five years. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say to clarify, you're talking about the new Tick, the Amazon. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Tick season three was canceled, but bef- right before the Boys season one started. Ah, which is what was like. Well, am I gonna watch this other superhero show? Gotcha. It's like Amazon was like, we got a different superhero. Yeah, we, a real we were show. going a different way. And it's a way that is much more pro cop. It sounds like probably I yeah it it. I do I I really want to, I don't know I I like people should give it a shot because I I can understand like all of the things I'm saying about like women being fridged and like gross sexual stuff and like pro cop or whatever. But like it really is just one of those like greater than you know the sum is is whatever what am i saying the whole is what the uh, fuck am i greater saying greater than the sum of its parts jesus it's greater than the sum of its parts you know it really it, it comes down to the acting and the directing more than anything the writing's really good too it's just like so many great scenes that are just like dripping with tension and you're like on the edge of your seat the whole time it's just very compelling yeah i'm i'm actually remembering the first episode or two of the tick because because you said that it was it was almost distressing and i and i was like that's weird the show's so funny and goofy i am thinking back to those first few episodes they are sincerely distressing they're kind of dark right (laughs) i don't remember a lot of it i just remember being like this is dark so the first few episodes follows arthur around while he is genuinely unsure if whether the tick is real or is is a manifestation of a mental breakdown, mm-hmm. um, which like on paper sounds a little iffy, but I do think is a genuinely interesting and and pretty well handled part of the plot. Um, the 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 idea being that like his fan he can't tell anyone about it because he has dealt with the consequences of people knowing that you have mental health problems and knows that it is safer for him just to keep quiet about that. He keeps seeing this large man. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but I should rewatch the tick. I fucking loved it so much. It was so good. (laughs) Um, well we have been going pretty long. I actually, it's funny. The most relevant thing I had to talk about was that I've been playing the Tony Hawk one and two remake Um, but I think we can, we were planning on doing that for the next news button, so we can probably just talk about it then. Okay. Um, short story is fucking slaps. Yeah. Tony Hawk's still good. Haven't played it, but I will eventually get to it. I love this. I mean, well, that's the thing. You would have thought a a Tony Hawk game was like a slam dunk, except they did. They tried to remake Tony Hawk one and two before and everyone hated it. So fair. Yeah. Good point. But eventually, like, this is a this is a problem. I was going to say it's a problem that you fix by throwing money at it. Uh, but the reality is this is a problem that you cause by denying it resources. And basically, right. that's yeah. it. Like, you just it's just like someone goes like, ah, remake the game. That's a slam dunk, right? That's money. Yeah. And people are like, okay, well, we need to make the game. And they're just like, we're not <laughs> interested in helping that happen. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, okay, well, we would need this much money, I think. And they're like, whoa, 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 these games are already made. It's like, well, yeah. we're remaking them? Right. Uh, so yeah, yeah, video games are bad. Um, I haven't I actually have not really been playing almost anything. I've been playing baseball still. Ah, I've fallen off baseball. I got to get back on. I knew it was going to happen. I can't keep interest in anything. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've really been playing. Um, I mean CK three. We haven't talked about that at all, but no, uh, I haven't. I played the shit out of that. I haven't played the I last s- week. But- I saw your. So I didn't know. I literally know nothing about CK three except I saw your tweet about like who are you playing as in Crusader Kings three, and that was right. very intriguing to me. I did not know that because like in crusader kings 2 there's extremely a person you're playing as right oh n- well it's the same thing in three. Oh, but okay. you're not playing as one you're playing as you play as a series of people 
Because when you're when the person who's oh, right got when, oh that when the person whose picture is in the corner dies, another person takes that place right. and okay. all your stats change, but nothing else changes. Oh, I guess I guess I always just thought you were playing through the lifetime of one person, but now that you say that, it makes more sense. Yeah, that, yeah, no, you're playing like five hundred years of history. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's funny because it's the same five hundred years. So in a way, like. It's sort of like it's sort of like the very funniest take on like Madden, where it's like it's released the same game every seven years. <laughs> it's like you're just re- different games replay made by the same people replaying the same 500 years of history. Uh, um, dude, I mean, they did. I they I know it's like the same game, but like. They redid the whole siege mechanic, and they removed uh, Vassal. Can I tell you this? They did not redo the siege mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's really good. CK three is phenomenally good. Um, there's if you if you saw my tweet thing, then uh, I don't know if this was the same thread or a different thread, but um, there's like an argument that this is like. It's hard to quantify, but this is like a quote unquote easier game. Like I'm mm-hmm. having a much easier time accomplishing the things that I want to accomplish. Like I- I'm having a much easier time getting people to agree to assassinate people for me. I'm having a much easier time <laughs> like uh, getting people to like me. I'm having a much easier time convincing people to become my religion. And it's hard to tell like um, <laughs> like. Keith, it's I hard to, was already your religion. Let's be honest. Oh, you're part of the cult of the exalted ghost? My religion oh, that I started? No, no, no. Sorry. I am your religion. Like, you worship me. You're not the ghost that I exalt. That's no. blasphemous. Sorry. Um, I, uh... And so, it's hard to be like... Like... The analogy that I put on Twitter was like, it feels like the difference between, you know, being on a train with a rail switcher button and every once in a while you get to you get to switch the track uh, uh, and like you and all of the other countries are like vying for like who gets to switch the track the right way uh, versus yeah. this game feels almost more like go karts where you have where like everyone has their own little car that they're swerving around like huh. I. I have a much more I have much increased ability to affect the world and it's easy to look at that and go they made it easier. Mhm. And I don't know that that's exactly true because it's also like well I'm a fucking king. Like right. I have yeah, I you're do supposed have, to have authority. <laughs> I do have the ability to and so it's hard to know like I was never a king in 11 in 1100. So I don't know how easy it was mm-hmm. to get people to kill someone for me. And um, and Keith, I don't want to. I mean, I don't want to like stand you up or anything. But I was an empress in eleven hundred. So, and how easy was it to get people to kill people for you? Um, depends on the people, I suppose. Much easier yeah. after we slaughtered ten thousand people inside the hippodrome. Let me tell you. Um. So so it's like there was something about the how hard you had to push to enact your will in crusader kings 2 that was very satisfying when you got something big done but there's also something about the frenetic chaos of crusader kings 3 where i do have you know hundreds of thousands of people living in my country and i have ten thousand soldiers and like i can you know there's multitude of ways that i can enact my uh, divine right to rule um but uh yeah it's a really great game i think there's a lot of different ways to play it and uh it, I, i'm sure that people if you're listening to a video game podcast you've probably heard another video game podcast talk about crusader kings 3 but i can't recommend it enough i think it's great sweet um yeah. and just um as a point of correction google has let me know that empress theodora of byzantium was alive from 497 to 548 so a fair Ooh. sight before 1100 i'm so sorry that's okay but it was probably even easier to assassinate someone yeah yeah just get them on the hippodrome and don't let them leave yeah well you don't have the you don't have the you don't have as powerful a pope 
Uh, That's like the big problem is that we're okay. all Catholic. Oh, yeah. I mean, up to oh, a point. Yeah. We're all Catholic, and the, by, as Catholics, you have certain rules that the big guy in uh, Italy yep, you know, King, let, uh, tells King us. King of Kings, maybe you've heard of him. I don't know. Look, you can't just start a war. If you want to start a war, you gotta you've got to tell a convincing permission. enough lie <laughs> saying that actually your great-great-grandfather's brother was the king of that place and you're the you are the real king and until you tell that lie you can't start this war <laughs> oh good good stuff um but I, I you know i think that's everything we have to talk about Most yeah that's it. i don't got anything else let's get out of here what do you say yeah let's do it